Arizona's offense awoke in the second half of the opener. Not surprising for a first game. And there's nothing unusual about Arizonans in Southern California in the month of August. And as usual, the Arizona defense stamped their license plates all over San Diego. What was special was a good start for a new Arizona coach. We will eventually, we will move to a level that in the future people will say, wow. And a lot of people, a lot of people say they were there then. But some of them will know they were there in the beginning. We're here to begin the new season next. not likely you're going to see the ivy-covered walls, and these trees won't soon be losing their leaves, but make no mistake about it. It's time for college football in southern Arizona. The 1-0 Arizona Wildcats come home for their home opener and face the Idaho Vandal. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave, sitting with the Wildcats back at Arizona Stadium this year, welcoming a new member of our broadcast team, Doug Plank, a former Ohio State Buckeye, good hard-hitting defensive back, who with the Chicago Bears saw John Makovic's offense when he was with the Dallas Cowboys. I'll say one thing, Dave. It was not fun being on the defense against John Makovic. Well, it wasn't much fun for the uh, San Diego State Aztecs, particularly in the second half last week. It was a nice platform for Coach Makovic in the new program. Well, you can't undercut this win. It was a win on the road. It ended a five-game losing streak from last season and don't forget they were down by 10 points early in this game and showed a lot of character by coming back well a lot of that character was shown by a young man who had never before started a college football game at quarterback jason johnson in his debut had a good one jason johnson had been standing on the sidelines for the last two years he'd only thrown 11 passes coming into that game but he was very confident and he spread the ball around completing 60 percent of his passes to eight different receivers well the idaho vandals last week got off to a rocky start in what is sometimes known as their own stadium martin stadium were also the Washington State Cougars play. But mind you, the Vandals did not get off to their best start, neither did John Welsh, who was an outstanding senior quarterback. Well, John Welsh has completed over 60% of his passes, 5,000 yards over the last three years. And if this guy has enough time back in the pocket, he's going to hurt you on offense. Uh, what Mr. Welsh and all of the Idaho Vandal offensive players will learn about tonight is the Arizona trademark. In San Diego last week, that trademark was stamped all over Southern California, the Arizona Double Eagle Flex defense. When you think about University of Arizona, it's all about the defense. And Michael Jolivet, one of their defensive backs, led the Pac-10 last year with five interceptions. He's got a great feel for the ball when it's coming down. And don't forget about Lance Briggs. Led the Pac-10 last season with tackles. And this guy is so athletic, he can play from sideline to sideline. All right, Doug, we we'll look forward to having you along with the broadcast this season. And all of you as well. Coming up, we've got NCAA college football, co football coming your way from the desert as the Arizona Wildcats open their... 2001 home season taking on the Idaho Vandals. Don't go away. We've got it right here on Fox Sports Net. <laughs> Balmy temperatures as you would expect in southern Arizona in early September. Gorgeous night for football. It's very cool on that nice beautiful green lawn here in the middle of Tucson, Arizona. They're expecting 45,000 tonight, and by indications presently, we believe they'll get that and perhaps a couple of more. This series began a long time ago. The last time the two teams played, President Johnson was in office. Arizona won that game here, 14-7. Overall, Arizona leads the series 8-2, and every one of the contests have taken place in this stadium in one form or another. And in fact, it's seated about 17,000. Well, the very celebrated wardrobe of John McAvick last week has given way something more traditional and I think dictated by weather in all fairness uh, not this suit look this week but a polo shirt for a coach who comes back into this stadium as well with a history here at one and oh and this is his debut and uh, as we were talking with Doug Plank before the game about the offensive mind of John McAvick, it's one of the things you won't hear with this man whether or not there'll be too much running or too much passing he likes it right down the middle and when you talk I think the biggest problem in football today, especially college football, is that so many people are giving up the run game and just throwing it all the time. And that's fine. They're moving the ball and doing things. But you look at the championship teams, and I really believe they'll be the ones that have the best balance because balance is what you need over a season, maybe not in an individual game. 
you have to have a good enough run game that if it's a slugfest and it's a run game, you can do it. Well, we'll find out what type of game it'll be tonight as John Makovic and his squad open the 2001 home portion of the schedule. The Wildcats with their backs to you at present as you take a look at the kicking team. Brian Pope out of Colton, California will kick this home season for Arizona underway as the Wildcats wait in the south end zone for the kick. It's Gary Love and Bobby Wade, the ever-explosive Bobby Wade, waiting in the south side, and we're underway. High end over end kick, and it's a dandy, and that's it. Wade will take it seven yards in the end zone, and Arizona goes to work on offense to begin. This is how the Wildcats line up tonight. Jason Johnson with that good start last week, 21 to 32 passes, 176 yards, will be a quarterback. Stephen Grace will anchor the offensive line. Grace, one of the best college centers. Melosi Leonard leads the wide receiver core, along with Wade, Hugo, Detweiler, and Farmer as the running back for the Wildcats. And there he is, Jason Johnson. 6'2", 210-pounder from the state of Washington. And here's his home opener as the starting quarterback for the Wildcats. Single back. Play action. And he's going to go deep on his first play. And they're across the 40, broken up, and there's a flag. The intended receiver was Brandon Marshall. And Arizona is going to move up considerably. Ten yards. And there you see, Doug, they wasted no time going deep. And I, I love this call because this sends a message to the defense. And you saw the results of throwing a long ball like that. You don't have to complete it. Many times in situations like that, you'll get interference. But I love that call coming out of the blocks because it sends a message to the defense that we're going to throw this thing deep. That was Ige Ibero who uh, bumped. That's a mouthful. Uh, it'll be all night long. Marshall, second play. Straight ahead to Farmer. And he picks up about five yards before a cluster of this defense grabs hold of him. Take a look. Jones, Taya Tapa, Beck, and Knowles cross the line. It's Rice, Lampos, and Staley, the linebackers, and a pretty good defensive backfield for this ball club. Evero, Robleto, Kramer, and that name is familiar for a reason, and Rankin in the defensive backfield for the Vandals, who come into the ball game 0-1-1 with a very inauspicious start in what is sometimes known as their home field at Martin Stadium. They lost to Washington State 36-7. On for it's down. Make that second down out of the pocket is Johnson and he's going to run and he's got a first down and then some across the 50 yard line first down Arizona at the Idaho 46 yard line and for these first three plays Doug the Wildcats are running and throwing at will I love their theme here but you'll notice Bobby Wade slipping and he was going to go to him as the primary receiver but instead he was able to roll out of the pocket buy himself some additional time and then realize he had a running lane up the field so Johnson leads the Wildcats to a first down. It's their second since they took control of the football to start the game. High formation, Detweiler, along with Farmer in the backfield for Arizona. And Farmer right through the middle, stays on his feet into the backfield, and finally lassoed and brought down another Arizona first down. You can't teach what Clarence Farmer just did. That's all instinct and determination. He refused to go down. Very nice hole at the line of scrimmage. They trap lock. Notice their offensive lineman moving down the line of scrimmage, and he, he runs right behind that trap lock. And the rest is Farmer. All determination and willingness to throw his body around. Well, the sophomore running back gained 100 yards on the nose last week, although he lost 10, so net 90. Through game one for Farmer and the Wildcats on first down. Play action pass. Johnson looking right down the middle again. Might be another flag. No. Good defense that time. Gary Love, the intended receiver. And the young man who was called for the pass interference a moment ago with the good pressure, that's Ivaro. Give credit to this Arizona protection, though. They're allowing Johnson ample time back in the pocket. That time, though, you have to give credit to the Idaho defense. Great coverage that time by Ivaro downfield, making sure that he did not interfere with the receiver. <laughs> Second down and 10 for Arizona. Ball spotted on the 32-yard line. Toss sweep goes around this side. And Leo Mills with his first 
carry of the season. He's good for about uh, five, maybe six yards. It'll bring up a third down for the Wildcats, their first third down of the night and of this series. Well, it's good to see Leo Mills back on this football team. He was not involved in the spring drills for personal reasons, but he's a player that can be productive. He's very gutsy when he gets the football, fighting for additional yardage. Let's see if the Arizona can convert. They go to the single back offense. Three wide receivers near side. Now we'll single back is Johnson out of the shotgun. Throws across, intended for way in and out of Bobby's hands. And Idaho forces a fourth down, and we'll see Mr. Keel and company. Bobby Wade's frustrated on that play. He knows that he should have been able to come down with that football. There's a rule in, in football that if you can get your hands on it, you should be able to make the catch. And, and John McAvitt had he had the matchups that he wanted in that situation. Sean Keel, the junior out of Littleton, Colorado, 0 for 1 last week with a field goal attempt, his first of the season. But you might recall, it hit the left upright at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. From 44 yards, it has the distance, and it is deadly accurate. Hill and the Wildcats strike first with the field goal, 44 yards, and Arizona on the scoreboard first. We'll see Idaho with the football for their first time, trailing Arizona three, Idaho nil. Well, there's a happy young man, place kicker in Arizona, in a good mood. That's been the uh, trend since uh, Keel took over the kicking duties. Here's a 44-yarder. He missed from 39 last week when he hit the upright. And that field goal, happy Peter Hansen as well. What set that kick up, of course, though, was a second down scramble by Jason Johnson. Good for a first down and put Arizona into Idaho territory. Seven plays, 53 yards. It took him two minutes and 39 seconds. And then the aforementioned field goal. Dave, there were some very instinctive plays by this Arizona offense on that drive. And Arizona kicks the ball to the Vandals for the first time. Lacey going to bring it out. And Chris, an elusive runner, and their go-to guy on offense, brings it out just across the 20-yard line. Let's take a look now. John Walsh, you heard about him. He was the most viable player of the Humanitarian Bowl a year ago at quarterback. Scott, Cobb, Martinez, Mitchell, and DeAnda across the front line. That's a new offensive line. That was a big bugaboo last week. Lewis, O'Connell, Martin, Lacey, and Franks. An experienced receiver core to go along with this experienced quarterback. It's pretty much uh, the same guys that, was, that were together two years ago when they had a dandy of a game. The talent on this offense is at the quarterback position and at the wide receivers, but you can't do it without an offensive line. On first down, they go straight up the middle, and Arizona's defense swarms, and about a pick of four on the first down. And speaking of that Arizona defense, Keone Frazier, along with Alex Luna, Young Thompson, and Johnny Jackson start on the front line. It's Wells, Briggs, and Ciofili in the linebacker core, and Jolivet, Worcester, Nash, and Chapman in the backfield for the Wildcats. Second down, second down and six to go for the Idaho Vandal. The single back backfield. Two wide receivers to the far side. And in motion is Jumper. And out of the pocket is Welsh, and there's a lot of blue after him. Goes to the sideline, and he completed, yes he did, and a great catch by Josh Jumper, a junior was able to put his toenails on the sideline or just inside it and pull that one in. That play was made by the quarterback. John Welsh had nowhere to go. He actually looked at two or three other receivers before he ended up throwing the football, but very creative in running out of the pocket to his right-hand side. One of the things Larry McDuff expected from this team tonight is quick huddles, quick to the line, and that's what we're seeing right now. On first down. Straight through the middle again, but not for much. Maybe two yards. Blair Lewis straight ahead. I would Lewis. Be, yeah, I'd be surprised if this Idaho team decides to continue to make a living putting the ball on the ground against this Arizona defense. Last week, they only gave up 41 yards rushing, which broke down to less than one and a half yards per attempt. You're not going to go anywhere with those kind of numbers. 
second down for Idaho. And flags fly. There were still, I believe, uh, 12 Dead seconds ball. left. Ball start. Ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yep, first penalty, a second penalty for the Vandals. You see Tom Cable, the head coach, played there. Then coached there twice. Now as a head coach in his second year, they finished five and six last year. I thought it was interesting when he was playing there, Dave, he actually was playing under Dennis Erickson at the time. He was exactly the head coach. right. And then Tom went on to have a year with the Indianapolis Colts as an offensive lineman. Then the career of coaching on second and long. Well, scares it out. Just too far. Chris Lacey, the intended receiver. And I tell you what, he is a dangerous receiver. He is last year an all Big West Conference wideout. And is ranked nationally as one of the top receivers in the NCAA. You just see that ball is just thrown a little too far and he lost his footing. And Jermaine Chapman had great coverage. That ball would have had to been perfectly thrown to be a reception that time. Arizona loves man-to-man -man coverage on the outside because it allows those other eight guys on the line of scrimmage to basically get very, very aggressive. Third down and 13 for Idaho. They put in motion Winston. Straight back. Under a lot of pressure and too high to the tight end. That's Jeff Franks. And they were talking today about trying to get the ball to Franks more, dragging him across the middle. He's a great blocker, and they're trying to get him to catch the ball, but not this time. Well, they love Franks, but you, you'll notice, you can freeze it right here, Arizona comes with a blitz, and credit Idaho, their running back does a great job of picking up the blitzer in the backfield. Welsh, he has to be more efficient on this throw. He had plenty of time to get rid of the football and just over through Franks. Bobby Wade waiting for this punt. across the 25 and wrestled at the 27 yard line where the Wildcats go to work first and 10. Bobby Wade electrified everybody at a 58 yard punt return that he created from virtually nothing last Thursday night. 5'11", 194 pounder with 45 catches last season. And back for his junior season out of Desert Vista High School in Phoenix. What's great about this kid, though, pick the year that you want to have a big play. His first year, the Hail Mary pass at Washington State. Last year, three runs, catches over 50 yards. This guy does it every single year. Also did well in the 5A championship game for his high school the same way. Across the middle and the first catch of the night. And I believe it's James Hugo. They Wildcats come right back with what the Vandals try to do on their last play from scrimmage, and that's at the tight end. Well, Hugo is a pretty easy target to hit at 6'6", 270 pounds. But one of the things that I like that John Makovic is doing on, the, on these first couple drives, he's using a lot of different personnel groups, sometimes one tight end, sometimes two tight ends, two and three receivers. It's very confusing for the defense to try to know what's going to come each and every play. All right, Detweiler, along with Farmer, in the backfield. Johnson with the Vandals with the blitz. And he is blasted as he tries to throw the ball. Big 91, Will Beck came in and give him a hit. And it appeared that the Wildcats were able to pick it up, but uh, they couldn't stop that big kid at 6'2", 334. Well, you see big number 91, Will Beck, come from the middle of the field, and he is one guy you don't want to have land on top of you, even if you're just falling down. But he is the cornerstone of that defensive line. This guy is relentless. He gives 100% on every play. And he's been named on the watch list for the Lombardi Trophy this year. So this young man uh, will play some Division I football. Third down for the Wildcats. Six to go. Johnson. Swings it out. Into the backfield. That's Anthony Fulcher. And Fulcher is tackled about two yards short. Fulcher, the sophomore out of Horizon High School in Scottsdale. And Arizona's offense off the field. And we're going to have a look at Ramey Peru. Fulcher nearly came up with that first down, but he's tackled by a former safety last year, Brad Rice, who was moved up to the linebacker spot. They wanted to get more speed in the linebacker position for this Idaho defense. 
they really felt that he was a much better football player at the linebacker rather than safety position. Peru punted six times last to Thursday, he averaged 35, as long as it was 51 yards in his debut. And he belts this one northward. Orlando Winston calls the fair catch at the 21-yard line, and that's where the Idaho Vandals will go to work for their second series. Idaho with the football, they trail the Wildcats by three. Idaho, after stopping Arizona on offense with the football at their own 21, and a big belt as, <laughs> boy, that was a big hit. Alex Luna came from his left end position and said, how do you do to John Welsh? Alex, out of the San Fernando High School in Southern California. One thing about Luna, notice how he gets off the block. Somebody was trying to attempt the block in the backfield, but when you're on defense, you have to defeat blocks. Luna that time just threw away the blocker, made a great hitter on Welsh. Well, here's a switch. Just about it. That's almost a Canadian football formation. They need an extra guy for that. They got everybody in motion finally. Settled down across, and that's the second completion tonight for Welsh. And he hooks up with Orlando Winston, the six foot sophomore, and a first down for Idaho. Winston only had two receptions last week in the game against Washington State, but they know that they have a weak offensive line that's not capable of giving them a lot of protection. So you can expect to see a lot of three-step drops. Notice Welsh going back just three steps and then rifling that ball to Winston on a quick slam pattern. And again, multiple shifts by Idaho prior to the snap. On first down, toss, sweep. Grant cut it back inside, the ball carrier is Nate Griffin. They'll make that to Blair Lewis once again. So Lewis dragged down by the Wildcats after a pickup of about three yards. will bring up second down and seven. Well, Brad Lewis thought he had a much bigger run on this, and it did. It initially, there appeared to be a great hole. Lewis decides to cut back, but suddenly it closes up quickly by the Arizona defenders. These guys have an attitude on this defense, and they're going to get better as this year goes on. Again, shifts. Of course, there's a lot to talk about in that defensive secondary for Arizona. We talked about that today. Second and seven. Fire. Complete, but good tackle after the catch. Catch made by Rossi Martin. He's a sophomore. And that's one thing you'll see from this Idaho team tonight. Now, I believe that is the third completion. Three different receivers. Jermaine Chapman, notice how he breaks down. He keeps a very wide base, very sure-handed tackle. And that's one thing that's been a characteristic of Arizona's defense over the years, very sure tackling, especially in the secondary. I get a lot of static from this. Head coach Tom Cable trying to figure this out after they struggled last week against the Washington State team on the road. First down at the 49-yard line of the Vandals. Two set in the backfield. It's Blair again on the give. Nothing fancy about that. That offensive line was some pretty good blocks that time to spring them for six yards, second down and four. Well, Blair Lewis is a good running back. There's no doubt about it, but he must be frustrated also. We talked about the young offensive line. Out of those five starters, four of them were replaced. You'll see there, though, they get a great push down the field, and he just follows the blockers. That time, the Arizona front linemen were pushed back at least five yards on that play. Lewis, six carries for 14 yards so far tonight. What has become customary, the shift in motion now is Lacey. And they go right back on the right side. Lewis is knocked down, flag on the play. The hit is made by Ray Wells, the linebacker. And we'll see about the uh, infraction. And it's against the Vandal. Ray Wells has come a long way. He was rated in, in the spring drills as the most improved defensive player. But you'll notice how he quickly recognizes this play and closes very quickly. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. You see him coming on the very middle of your screen here. Wells, he just closes on the ball carrier. Once he makes contacts, instead of just dropping down, he continues to pump his legs. And that's a technique that a lot of defenders forget. After you make the contact, you have to finish the play with your leg movement. Holding against Idaho. Ten yards assessed at the end of the play. So you repeat second down. And now it's 
second down and 13 for Welsh and the Vandals. O'Connell and Blair in the backfield. Under a lot of pressure, a little screen inside to Lacey, who loses his feet at the 50-yard line, and that'll bring up third down for Idaho. Lacey is definitely a skilled receiver, and it's amazing in high school. Him and Martin, Rossi Martin were also teammates. This is a delayed play trying to influence the defense and come back with a center screen that Lacey quickly realizes he has nowhere to go after he makes the catch. See, yeah, John, he has already obtained or has been awarded a degree at Idaho and is working on his master's degree presently. Intelligent young man comes across the middle and, and uh, that is some hard knocks uh, college there as Josh Jumberg finds himself between a couple of Wildcats including Jarve Worcester. Yeah, Jarve, he saw that thing coming the entire way. And when you're running quick slant patterns, that hurts. That hurts even up here in the press box. <laughs> you love those plays of safeties. The punt team on once again for the Vandals. It's Ryan Downs at the other end. It's Bobby Way. Trying to pooch that a little bit. Wade's going to field it at the 12. And spun down and brought down at the 11. So Idaho saw some tape about Bobby Wade. And a good punt will keep Arizona inside the 20. As a matter of fact, they mark him just outside the 10. Arizona football leading by three when we come back. Welcome back to Arizona football opening night here at the stadium. The Wildcats leading 3-0 over Idaho. John Makovic. Catching with Charlie Dickey, familiar face, offensive line coach at Arizona on the sideline. And Johnson and the Wildcats begin marked down at the 12-yard line. Quick out, complete. And still on his feet and getting more than a first down for the Wildcats. And that off the chart here. Let's take a look here. That one was Andre Thurman. That's right. He wears a three in. Well, he's got a four on tonight. So Thurman on the quick out. And these are the kind of matchups that John Makovich wants. He feels that his individual receivers are better than the defense that he's going to be going against tonight. There was nothing like having a crew of kids that can catch the ball and then create. And that's exactly what Johnson and the Wildcats have in their stable. And straight ahead that time is Cox, Tremaine Cox, a freshman. Played his high school football about uh, 600 yards from here down at Tucson High. Former Badger now with his first carry inside Arizona Stadium. Well, they really like Tremaine Cox because he's got the speed and size to be a game breaker. That time, w watch how he reads the blocking of his offensive line. They almost were giving pass blocking, completely fooled the Idaho defense. Cox had a pickup of three. Arizona on second down and seven. Now the ball spotted at the 31-yard line. Of time for Johnson, who has Wade, and Bobby can't hang on a second time. And there you see the frustration of Bobby Wade tonight. Something's up, Doug. He dropped a punt. He dropped two passes now. And what happens is when you make one mistake, you start talking to yourself. This was probably should have been thrown to the outside, but Bobby Wade in this situation should have been able to come down with the ball. You see that he had both hands on it. Johnson delivering it with a lot of velocity, but still, that is a catch that Bobby Wade has to make. Uh, a little bit too much popcorn before the game, and the butter will go away. High formation for Arizona on a third down play. Two wide receivers to the side. Johnson stays in the pocket, fires across the middle. Pendex with Thurman, and he's belted, but not before he hauls in the first down. Thurman almost got knocked out of his jersey on that one. And <laughs> this time, Johnson led him across the middle, but notice how high the ball is. What an incredible hit, and still being able to go ahead and hold on to the ball. Perhaps you heard the crack that time. Johnson now four of eight passing tonight. And Arizona the first down at the 49, at the 44-yard line. Mills straight up. And a 
just picked up a three. Second down and seven coming up for Arizona. What I like about their play selection is I always try to watch a game as a safety. What are they trying to influence me? What are they trying to make me do? They're doing a very good job of mixing the, the play selection tonight. Notice the trap blocks. They're pulling offensive linemen, and they're trying to take advantage of this over-aggressive Idaho defense. Second down for Arizona. Nice handle that time. And that was James Hugo. That guy has a pretty famous father, I would say. Yep, Jerry Kramer. He was a pretty good author. Before that, a pretty good uh, guard for the Green Bay Packers. Played along with that great Packer team, along with Bart Starr and company. Now, Jordan, playing on this team, had a brother who also played at that school. And, of course, their dad, Jerry. Jordan missed the entire uh, spring season this year. He had a bad knee, but he's back and in playing again for Idaho. And this time it's complete. Pelosi Leonard with his first catch of the night. And Arizona comes up with another first down. But hang on, there's a penalty flag on the field. And the Wildcats seem to be in retreat mode right now. But we'll take uh, listen. Illegal shift, offense, two men moving at the same time. Five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, Jim Springer delivers the bad news. My goodness, you've seen Idaho come out with about uh, five moving at once, but Arizona with an illegal shift, and they're called for it. Well, we haven't seen much of Melosi Leonard tonight. He actually was the leading receiver in last week's game, but you can see that he's very sure-handed, ran a very crisp route that time, and created separation between him and a defensive back. And, and John McEvick has to be happy with the way his quarterback is spreading the ball around to a number of different receivers. Spread offense this time. Three out to the right, two out to the left. And Johnson with lots of targets downfield, launches across the middle. That's Leonard again for the first down. And I don't see any flags this time. Melosi Leonard, he caught the Idaho defense playing a zone. When you're running against a zone as a wide receiver, you don't run across the formation, you just sit down. Notice how Leonard here just stops and waits for the football because had he continued across the formation, he would have been led right into the safety. Instead, he just patiently waits for the ball to arrive for a nice catch and a nice first down. There you see Jordan Kramer, number seven, taking Melosi down to the ground. First down for the Wildcats. Farmer and Detweiler in the backfield for Arizona. Johnson is warming up with his arm right now, going down the middle for Wade, and Wade is slowed by the defender that time, Ed Rankin, junior cornerback, with him stride for stride, so it's an incomplete pass, second down for Arizona. Jason Johnson, as soon as he got the ball back in the pocket, he wasted no time looking for Bobby Wade down the field, but you'll see that he actually had double coverage, shallow and also over the top. Idaho realizes also that Bobby Wade is such a very valuable and dangerous deep threat. They're going to try to keep at least two guys on him on most of these passes. Right, Arizona spreading him out again. Quick count to Farmer off the right side. Trying to make some on his own spins. And after the pirouette picks up just one yard. Patrick Leiby, a sophomore linebacker, a strong linebacker in their defensive scheme, makes the play. Number four, there you see old Patrick, 6'2", 233 pounds. And he's got a few years left at Idaho. School that just recently moved into 1A football, and now into the new conference, the Sun Belt Conference, only for football. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, he's a walk-on, too. He's a tough kid, man. He loves to play football. Farmer with three carries, just 10 yards so far at 100. Gross against San Diego State. And the pass outside, and it's completed. Lance Relford becomes another Wildcat to catch the ball tonight. He's a sophomore out of Booker T. Washington High School in Houston, Texas. Ivero, who's uh, been quite busy tonight with Arizona receivers, made the play. And what Arizona is doing is they're just simply taking advantage of what the defense is giving them. That time, F Ivero was well off the receiver that time, Lance Relford, allowing him basically just to settle down and make an easy catch. And as I said, Relford, another one of those talented wide receivers you're going to see plenty of during the course of the season. He had one start last year against Oregon State. Well, he connected from 44 last time. Sean Kill now in for 43. From the left hash, Kiel on the way, and this time he is 
pulled left. And Idaho's defense holds Arizona a second time tonight. Well, that's so Keel, yeah, yeah, that's unusual ahead. for Keel. He, he, he attacked that ball very confidently, but especially in these situations early in the game, those three points a lot of times makes a big determination on what the opposition runs for offensive plays. Well, the last thing Arizona would want after a very promising first series that resulted in a field goal is to come away with two more series inside Idaho territory, not coming away with points. So that's exactly what the Wildcats have. And after the missed field goal attempt, Idaho takes over at the 27-yard line. Welsh at quarterback. High formation behind it's O'Connell and Lewis. Lewis with the call, and he may have picked up one yard. And they're going to give him just that. They'll bring up second down and nine for Idaho. Just 26 seconds remain in the first quarter. The Wildcats coming home 1-0, trying to make it 2-0 against this team, the team they have not played since 1964. And again, quick huddles back out to business for Idaho. Man in motion is Lacey. Rollout pass this time for Welsh. And he hits his tight end, Jeff Franks. And a modest pickup of one yard. Was it Kevin O'Connell? Excuse me. O'Connell, the junior fullback. We saw Joel Levette coming up. Not only does this guy get interceptions, he's also a very sure-handed tackler. What I'm impressed watching film on this guy, he has an incredible feel for the football when it's in the air. It's one thing to have good coverage on a receiver, but it's another thing to know when the ball is coming down and where it's at. This guy is so instinctive in, in finding that football. Big third down play for Idaho. Two receivers on either side. Welsh, four of nine. He has passed for 40 yards. And he's going to pass on third down. Quick one, a nice little screen across the middle, but reading it right there on the spot. Lewis with the catch and the tackle, Johnny Jackson. So Jackson with the good stop for the Wildcats. We're going to see the punt unit on the field for Idaho when we come back. Caps by three. Well, the first 15 minutes have been completed. Arizona with a three-point lead. Ryan Downs on the field for the... Idaho Vandals, he'll pick for the third time tonight. Bobby Wade waits at the 27-yard line. Bobby wants nothing to do with this one. It takes an Idaho bounce, and it's going to be declared legally dead at the 20-yard line. So a good punt by Idaho, and Arizona's at the 20. Well, let's take a look at those first-quarter stats. Arizona leading in both categories. 46 rushing to 18, 67 to 39, 113 to 57. But take a look at John Makovic's uh, play selection guy. Pretty blown, balanced. I, I think that really says even more than those statistics because it actually shows how many different plays that he's been sending in. But he's trying to balance it. But what I'm impressed with is how many different personnel groups he's sending in to run those plays. They try to sweep at the farmer. And Vandals were on the spot. Farmer hit in the backfield, tackle for a loss. And that'll bring up a second down for Arizona. It'll be second down and about. I call it around 13 yards. So Farmer's not having the night anyway as yet that he did in San Diego a week ago. Flip backs for Arizona on second down. Quick out to Wade. Wade immediately hit. And then here comes the rest of the posse to take him down at the 35-yard line. That was Ed Rankin. And that was, that's what makes Bobby Wade so valuable and dangerous, his ability to try to get away from defenders. But credit Johnson that time with recognizing pressure. Blitz came up the middle, quickly delivered the ball out to Wade, and had he been able to be able to be able to shed the defender just a little bit quicker that time he might have been able to head down the sideline third down play for Arizona make it third down and nine lone back shotgun Johnson and they drag Wade across the middle and he's got plenty of room and a blocker Wade headed down the sideline at the 20 and knocked out of bounds at the 15 and there's a flag I believe at the end of that play tack on some more takes the hat off of Bobby Wade. That'll cost some more 
yards, but Arizona will have it first and goal when we continue. Well-designed play by Arizona. They ran all the receivers deep down the field. They brought Bobby Wade across shallow. And big credit Johnson, he had enough time back in that pocket for that first delivery. First foul, 15-yard face mask, defense. Penalty half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Jason Johnson realized how open Bobby Wade was, and instead of rifling the ball, he just managed to get it out to him. And the rest is Bobby Wade. You can see how dangerous he is with his top end speed and acceleration. Look at a dangerous Mr. Ibero's uh, approach there. Ooh, that hurts. I'll take a snap your neck. 15 yard penalty, half the distance to the goal. First and goal for Arizona. They mark it at the seven yard line. Arizona inside the red zone. Detweiler and Farmer shift into the eye formation on first and goal. They give to Farmer straight ahead. Farmer on his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Clarence Farmer is showing why he's such a dangerous threat at the running back position. He had a, a hole to run through along the offensive line. But notice he just powers his way into the end zone with two tacklers spinning off inside the five-yard line. But this guy last week had an incredible run, a 29-yard run, where five, five or six guys missed him. But he's somebody that's going to be, become more and more dangerous as the season unfolds. Neal on board for only his second point after attempt of the season. He hit his one try at San Diego. And that thing is hit wide. Don't forget, there's a two-point uh, possibility at the end of this play, but the Wildcats recover. But uh, Arizona's kicking game tonight with some difficulty, but not having difficulty on the previous play was this young man. Farmer, once again, plows forward, gives Arizona a 9-0 lead. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Well, Sean Keel uh, not having the type of opening night. He just uh, had a point after attempt, hit one of his own guys. There you see Steve Grace, number 66, on special teams. He plays left guard. That hit him right back in the noggin. Take one more look at it. 66, boom, out. I guess you could call that a block, right? <laughs> Kickoff man is Ryan Slack, and he nails this one into the end zone. There will be no run back for Idaho. So Arizona takes the 9-0 lead, scoring drive, four plays, 66 yards. Big pass play to Bobby Wade, then the penalty, and then the run, the seven-yard touchdown drag into the end zone by Clarence Farmer. Farmer, by the way, 24 yards, four carries. And to that seven-yard touchdown run. The Vandals now trailing by nine. Four men in motion and set. So Lacey moves again. Welsh fires outside, picks up the back out of the backfield. That's Willie Cipolo. Cipoloa, rather. He was a freshman getting his uh, first taste of... Uh, a Pac-10 opponent with a reception. What makes it tough when you're running an offense that Idaho is running right now? Yes, you're getting some completions, but you're not going anywhere. That was for no gain, or I'm sorry, two yards. But last week against Washington State, their longest pass was only 12 yards long. That has to be very frustrating for their head coach, Tom Cable. Well, we're seeing the trend here, too. He's either, he being Walsh, is either out of the pocket or throwing at about two steps, not even three. There it is back very quickly inside to Winston. Orlando with the reception uh, very close to the first down. It may require a measurement. And I think what this says is that they have had no success in terms of trying to run the football. And a lot of teams, what they'll do is, if you can't run the football, they'll go to a short passing attack, which is what Idaho is doing here. This time, though, if you continue to run receivers into the middle of the field, you risk bodily injury, as we've already seen earlier by some of the hits that the Arizona defenders have put on these wide receivers. Well, 7 of 12 now for 51 yards. Again, multiple shifts. Idaho, it is a first down. And the sweep ball carriers, Lewis Blair, would make that Blair Lewis, man with two first names. 
Blair on the sweep to the near side. He picks up about five, and now the Vandals show a little bit of a march. Well, Lewis was their lead rusher last week against Washington State, but you'll see the effort that time by the defense for Arizona. Ray Wells coming in and tripping him up. But Blair Lewis is their marquee back. He's got decent size at 211 pounds, but hard to run against a tough defense like Arizona. McConnell and Lewis in the backfield. We give this to Lewis again, right side. Makes his own after a nice little hit on the right side. Ray DeAnd and Robert Mitchell, the strong guard, strong uh, tackle on that side. Open it up for him, and he's very close to another first down. Well, that was a good effort by Lewis that time. But look at the blocking at the point of attack, and he just ran through. It was one of the Arizona defenders that had an opportunity at the line of scrimmage, but give, give Blair Lewis some credit. He's running with some determination. You can see how emotionally fired up he is down in the field. Well, he got a nice little spring from DeAnda and Mitchell. Maybe he gets it again. Seven rushes, 26 yards. Another first down for the Vandals, two in a row. Again, they shift on first down at the 41-yard line. Belcher in motion. Lewis in the pocket and the wrong pocket. Arizona surrounds it. Finally, Ray Wells, the linebacker, introduces him to this nice soft turf. Well, you'll see what he's doing is he's looking for the quick slant pattern, but it's covered that time. He has nowhere to go with the football. And number seven, Ray Wells, look at the job Joel Vett does on coverage. And he was trying to hit that time Chris Lacey on a quick slant pattern, but there was absolutely nowhere to go except for the defenders to get a sack. After the loss, second down and 14. One back for Idaho. That's Lewis on the draw play. He bangs straight ahead. And I tell you what, he's not afraid to mix it up. We saw that young man jump off the field after a game a moment ago and show he's uh, excited to be here. Then he knocked into Arizona's linebackers. When Plazer, nice game. Yeah, when Plazer's successful, notice the offensive line. They're selling a pass play on this time. And, and the defense from Arizona starts rushing in like they're going to be going back, attacking the quarterback. But instead, give them credit. He hands the draw to Blair Lewis, completely catches this Arizona defense by surprise. Lewis, eight carries, 35 yards. He takes a breather on this play. Third down, passing down. In motion is Belzer. Sprint out pass underneath to Bowser, and the junior is very close. A penalty flag, and uh, it would not uh, bode well for Arizona in that situation. Here you see Belzer. He's a junior, 5'11", 169 pounder. He just dragged him across the middle. Belzer's one of those receivers they like to use down the field. He has a 14 yards per reception average. But that time, we saw him just basically go out in the shallow flat. It looks like this, this penalty is going to be going against Idaho. We'll be interested about this one. Let's hear from Jim Springer. Illegal block in the back. Ten yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat third down. Well, there you saw the penalty on number 30. Or was that Blair Lewis, number 20? Or I think it was actually Ethan Jones, their wide receiver. Right, the 80, down the 80 field. Like a 30. <laughs> so many times you want to get the block, you don't care how you get it. Front, back, to the side. <laughs> that time, Ethan Jones is going to go back and say, Coach, at least I knocked him down. So that uh, pass play, all for not, negated by the penalty. Third down now. Ten to go. The ball back at the 41-yard line. Three receivers to the near side. Belcher once again in motion. Welsh is whacked as he throws it and overthrows Jeff Franks, the tight end. And that'll bring up fourth down for Idaho. That ball was launched way too early. You'll see from the right-hand side, I believe it's Briggs coming right through a, a hole and putting pressure on the quarterback that time. Welsh, and, and Welsh did not want to go ahead. You'll see everybody's open. And there's no one in the middle of the field, and he has, has a quick read to get rid of that football as fast as he can. The credit to the Arizona defense. They're playing pretty good man-to-man -man coverage. Tonight. And that's what Larry McDuff was telling us just this afternoon. you got to have guys who want to play this defense. Bobby Wade waiting for the punt. Another booming kick. This is a missile. And it goes right into the end zone. Wise move by Wade. So on the touchback, after a good stand by the Wildcats, Arizona will have the football leading it by nine.
Arizona with a first down at the 20-yard line. Split backs behind Jason Johnson, who will throw on first down, swing it out to Melosi Leonard. Good pickup of about seven yards. And let's take one more look at that defensive stop that led to Arizona's possession. And what, what made this play work was Lance Brig was far enough off the line of scrimmage that the offense had no idea that he was going to blitz. Notice how he momentarily pauses, and then starts up the middle, and then brings it to the outside and has enough athleticism and speed to go ahead and make that pressure on the quarterback and force that incompletion. And actually, uh, Charlotte tied in, had a slight step that time. They go to Mills. And Leo is brought down just inside the 30-yard line. And that'll bring up a third down and one for Arizona. Nine minutes. And a couple of ticks remain in the half. Idaho defense is getting a lot of repetitions tonight, but they're bringing it. They're, those guys are playing with a lot of aggressiveness and trying to attack the ball carrier. And Beck, as I said, he's a cornerstone of this defensive line. Very aggressive and extremely strong. Good count. Iowa makes it straight up the middle, and Idaho may have held him. This will be a, uh, an occasion to see the chain gang. It was Leo Mills who got the call. I talked about Will Beck. He plays nose tackle for him. He's their best player. He was the conference defensive player of the year last year in the Big West Conference. But he's a wide body at over 300 pounds, and there has to be better areas to try to attack than where he's at. It looked like Brad Rice, number 18, came up to fill that hole. And yet Arizona, through extra effort, was still able to pick up that first down. We'll take a look at big Will Beck there. He started as a freshman and has been on the field virtually for every defensive play for four years now. Three wide receivers to the near sideline. High snap. Give it back inside of Tremaine Cox. And he will pick up about three yards. Second down and seven for the Wildcats. So that was good recognition that time by number 50, Ryan Knowles, who quickly realized that that was going to be a handoff. And last year, he had six sacks and nine tackles for the loss, so he's accustomed to playing on the offensive side of the football. Also an all-conference performer last year. Johnson swings it outside to Bobby Wade, and he has rolled out of bounds about a yard shy of the first down. Brad Rice, the weak linebacker. He is the young man that you mentioned a while ago out of... Uh, Idaho, uh, Lewiston High School, started as a safety, and they said he's such a good athlete, so big, so strong, such a good tackle to play the linebacker position. Johnson now 11 for 16, make it 12 for 17, and a first down for the Wildcats. Malosi Leonard now starting to uh, rack up some receptions tonight. Nice little out. Malosi and Arizona stay on the field as they move the chains again. And there's nothing intricate about this. This is just pitch and catch. Pelosi Leonard just settling down five, ten yards downfield in front of Ige Ibero. They must be telling him, don't let these receivers get past you. But unfortunately for Idaho, Idaho. giving up too Number much one. cushion. And the Idaho coaching staff says, hold on, we're going to break this right now. So Idaho calls the timeout. And now John McEvick's crew will have a chance to uh, rest and get ready for the next play. Arizona with a 9-0 advantage, trying to extend that. Jason Johnson is off to a pretty good start tonight and uh, managing the passing well so far, keeping Arizona's offense on the field here in the second quarter. So let's hear what uh, this head coach had to say about this young man. He had a couple of opportunities to really make a heads up play, like the touchdown pass to Brandon Marshall, where they lined up wrong, and he just flicked a little touchdown pass over there that no one was around. It's those kinds of things that I saw in him that was encouraging, and I was very pleased to see. Well, Coach Makovic will be encouraged by his stats, at least so far tonight, as he's been spreading the ball around to a variety of receivers, 12 of 17 for 138 yards. There's seven minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first half. And I think part of it also, this kid is a very intelligent kid. He has a 3.75 grade point average here at the university. This, he's the whole package. Yeah, I think both these quarterbacks and after these two teams, they could have the college up. Uh, no, they, they could win on Regis Milburn's show. That's right. Pitch this time 
two by the, uh, nope, that time it was intended for Andre Thurman. Thurman thought he should get a call, but the linesman said nope. Back to the huddle for you. Second down for Arizona, second and ten. It looked like number five, Tim Sands, was hanging all over the receiver. And you can see his left hand. Most times, that's what defensive backs will do. They will put, they will engage the receiver with that left arm. But can't believe that the official did not see that. On second down, Johnson looks for Wade, finds him, but back at the line of scrimmage. Third down and ten coming up. This almost looks like the Idaho offense. <laughs> Let's, let's get a completion for two or three yards. It's going to look good in the stats. But, and, and maybe when you have a receiver like Bobby Wade, a one-yard pass is still a very dangerous play because he could turn it into something else. Absolutely. Brad Rice with that tackle. Arizona comes out with five people wide. Three of them on the near side. Lots of time fired across the middle and bounced it off the hands of the intended receiver, Brandon Marshall. And that brings up fourth down in the punting situation for the Wildcats. Well, this is a tough catch for Brandon Marshall, but the play starts with the protection. Look at the job that this offensive line does in giving him plenty of time. Johnson looking at two and three receivers downfield before he decides to end up going down the field to Brandon Marshall. But that was a very well executed play along the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Brandon had to come back for it. Here's the punt. was Winston that the Wildcats were in his circle but they say the halo was not violated so it'll be first down for the Vandals great punt that time by the Wildcats Orlando Winston nearly drew a penalty flag not against Arizona but notice how late he puts up the, the signal that he's signaling for a fair catch that should be done much quicker than what he and what happens is a lot of times punt returners will do that on purpose to try to attract a penalty flag from the officials well Ramey Peru kicks the Vandals inside their own 10 yard line with help of some great coverage on that first down for Idaho deep in their own end and the first play results in Blair Lewis falling down behind his own blocks. Blair Lewis got tied up with his own offensive lineman, but it was because of the penetration of the Arizona defense. Notice how that line of scrimmage gets pushed backwards. The Arizona defense that time just controlled the line of scrimmage, and they gave Blair Lewis nowhere to go. Second down and 10. Ball on the eight-yard line. Arizona can make a move with a big defensive stop right now. Four in motion, now set for Idaho. Lewis again with a little bit of running room, picks up four yards. And a big third down play coming up right now for Idaho. If there's one weakness against this Arizona defense being so aggressive, it's the cutback movement. Blair Lewis has exposed it a couple times tonight, able to find a crease, not to be able to pick up a big gainer, but, but sometimes picking up 5, 10 yards on that cutback. And when you're a defender, your responsibility is backside containment. You have to make sure that you do not allow the running back to cut back against the grain for a big gain. Well, they need a moderate gain right now. Six yards, third down and six. Franks in motion. Welsh. And that ball is knocked down, but there are a lot of penalty flags in the air. The knockdown came from, uh, I believe it was Anthony Thomas. And it was. Anthony Thomas got a big old claw up there. When you're throwing this particular pattern, you must cut the defensive lineman's legs out and bring their hands down. That time Arizona realizing. Holding defense. That penalty is enforced to the previous spot. Ten yards. It results in a first down. Well, you heard the bad news, perhaps you did, from Jim Springer, our referee tonight. Holding against Arizona's defense, and that's an automatic first down. That changes the entire complexion of this the, movement. There is a very fine line between good coverage and holding, but Anthony Thomas, number 58, that's two big plays in a row. But he was able to go ahead and stuff that running play previously and get his hands up on that deflection. New life for Idaho. They put Jelmberg in motion. Now he stops in the H-back position. Walsh is going to fire and complete the pass. 
That time he picked up uh, Rossi Martin, the sophomore wide receiver. And now we see actually they sneak Brian Lindgren into the game. Lindgren, a 6'4", 210 pound sophomore. So Welsh did well, but not well enough at least. Out of Walla Walla, Washington is Lindgren. He's the backup quarterback, but their head coach, Tom Cable, likes to at least insert him for one series in each half of every game just in case he has to go in play. He was two for four passing last week against Washington State. And he gives to Lewis, and with a good surge, that's a first down. Oh, no, I take that back. He was stopped up uh, there at the 31-yard line. A couple blockers out in front. Looked like they took him along with for the ride. But Lewis, with some good yardage, brings up a third down and short for the Vandals. And Idaho's doing a decent job tonight, too, spreading the football around. In addition to their running game, seven different players have caught a pass from them, not necessarily very long passes, as we're watching their head coach, Tom Cable, who has roots also in the Pac-10. He was an offensive coordinator at Cal for a number of years, as well as the last job he had before he came to Idaho, which was Colorado. Well, that's a, a photograph to scare the living daylights out of Larry McDuff and everybody associated with Arizona football in any capacity. Lance Briggs is on the deck. And you see Coach McDuff on the field. And, and he has the look of concern because he knows what an impact that a guy like Briggs can do for your defense. Well, Larry, of course, uh, so much uh, a part of that big Arizona defense that made so much news in the 90s and then a, a four year ride in the National Football League and last year in the Super Bowl as a special teams coach for the uh, New York Giants and now back uh, what he considers home now Tucson and the Wildcats and Briggs is uh, sitting up now so he's going to feel a little bit better but uh, you know coach McDuff until it's over and done it's uh, it's in progress, so we'll see about this work in progress. Lance Briggs, and that's the good news. Well, Briggs was caught up in a mass of humanity on the previous play, and I'm, I don't even know if it was necessarily a limb that was extended or hyperextended, but just the bodies that were rolling on top of him. I think he just had the unfortunate situation to be underneath a couple thousand pounds of football players. And that'll do it. We saw a moment ago he was in the huddle standing and then he more or less uh, bent over then he uh, takes the knee and goes backward. All right, Idaho on their third down play. Give it straight ahead to Anthony Tenner, the senior tailback. And it looks like Anthony has gained enough for the first down and that means uh, Idaho stays on the field on offense. So Lance on his hind legs right now, so that's a good uh, that's a good uh, indication that he'll be back a little bit later. Four wide for Idaho on first down. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Lindgren stays in the pocket, locks it up, and nearly completed, and the flag comes out. Ethan Jones, a wide receiver, had his hands on it. And I believe the call is going to be against Jermaine Chapman. Let's double check. Remember, Ethan Jones didn't have much. <laughs> In fact, if anything, wealth. it almost looked like offensive pass interference. But you can see the quarterback back Pass in the pocket. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. And, and I, I told, as a former defensive back, I think those calls are so subjective they could go either way. The ball was underthrown, and just because it was underthrown and the receiver had to reach back for the ball, the defender simply just continued on downfield, and I think to be flagged for interference there was a stretch. Ray Wells, a linebacker, and that's a bit of a mismatch. The linebacker Wells on Jones, but uh, nonetheless, a second major penalty against Arizona's defense, and now Idaho is just a yard away from Arizona territory, and they've reached the 50. Anthony Tenner, who picked up a first down just a moment ago, delivers the ball over the 50, and now the Vandals with an extended run here. Three minutes remain in the first half, and you figured a moment ago Arizona was hoping after a great punt that had uh, Idaho start this series on their own eight. 
would give Arizona a pretty good uh, shot at field position and a possible score. Instead, it's Otto seizing the initiative. Two minutes, 45 seconds remain in the half. Lindgren on a little looking pass. Very close to a first down. Orlando Winston, the sophomore, with another reception. And that's going to be plenty for the first down. Move the chains again. The Vandals are wearing this play out. It's a quick slant pattern to the weak side. We've seen Orlando Winston be the recipient several times on this pass pattern. A couple times Arizona's been flagged for covering too close, but they've got to learn to get their hands up on the defensive line to be able to knock that ball down. High formation on first down. Lindgren in the pocket with time across the middle, and it's picked off by Jolivet. Michael with a pick, and that puts a halt to Idaho's offensive run. They're going to mark it down at the one, but uh, I think uh, Larry McDuff and the Wildcats will take that just fine. Look at the hand-eye coordination by Michael Jolivet to come down with that ball. In the open, we talked about his ability to know where the football is at. He has a great feel for the football in space, and what an athletic move. And it looked like his momentum carried him into the end zone. But they're going to, unfortunately for University of Arizona, they're going to have to work this football on the one-yard line. The good news, of course, uh, the Arizona offense is on the field. The bad news is you're looking at it. They're huddling on that nice new blue end zone. I think if I was throwing against the Arizona defense, I would not pick Mike Lejol of that side. It just cost the Vandals the football. First down at the one. 99 yards to go for Arizona. Johnson's going to air it out across the middle. And let's back over 99 yards. Brandon Marshall across the 20. 99, ring him up. have seen this play last year I don't think uh, his previous long before this was a 56 yarder against Washington State but Brandon Marshall separates from the defensive back has enough awareness to find the football and, and, and what was nice about that play was Jason Johnson gave him an opportunity to make that catch he threw the ball high and allowed him to run underneath it well he threw the ball from uh about one yard from the uh, end line of the end zone, and now Johnson has to run 90 to put the ball down, and that one does not get through as well. My goodness, there's problems with the uh, place kicking the unit of the Wildcats. Let's take a look at this 99-yard reception by Brandon Marshall. Johnson, he reaches back and throws that football as far as he can. <laughs> that has to be exciting for Brandon Marshall to have that football in your hands and nothing but green grass here at Arizona Stadium in front of you. And as you might surmise, that is a personal long career best for both of them, 99 <laughs> yards. That has to be in the record books. <laughs> there's, there's his sprint. It can't talk be about anything Johnson. else. I mean, he's running down there to go hold on the uh, extra point. And he's a happy young man right now. And his second start, that big passing play, big plus for Arizona. By the way, Arizona now with a 15 nothing lead over the Idaho Vandals. Two minutes, five seconds remain in the half. Ryan Slack, the uh, young man, a freshman who's won the job as the kickoff guy. Hit the last one in the end zone, does it again, and they're not going to bring it out. Blair Lewis says, uh, no, we'll take it to 20, thank you. That is a weapon, to be able to kick a football off and consistently put it in the end zone. That's a big play. So Slack gives none to the Vandals, and neither does Marshall. And his own Marshall plan covered a hemisphere that just a moment so, ago. That was so impressive, but what made that play work was the fake by the offensive line in terms of selling a play action pass and then giving enough pr protection to Johnson to hold hold back in that pocket and allow Marshall to get open and then have enough savvy to be able to deliver that football in such a way to allow him to run underneath it. Well, that would tie, obviously. <laughs> that is now the 99 yard is the longest pass play in Arizona history. Meanwhile, Welch is back into the game for the Vandals and under a lot of pressure throws the ball out of bounds. Chris Belzer was the intended receiver. So after Welsh 
had an opportunity to watch the previous series, ably quarterbacked by Brian Lindgren, his uh, successor, a sophomore, now the senior Welsh back in the game. There you take a look at Lindgren. Did pretty well until he threw that ball to uh, Joel Avett. And I tell you what, when he left the field and saw Arizona at the one yard line, the last thing he thought it would be one play later and Arizona would be <laughs> on the scoreboard. Second down now for Idaho at their own 20. Give lots of room and a big hit. And now it's going to be accentuated. It was a uh, brick house, as it was once said in the song. I, I thought I heard Lance Briggs back in the game. We heard that hit. <laughs> oh, my. When you can just stymie a running back like that, that's a real credit to this guy. He not only has the ability to fill the holes on the inside. Arizona, number one. But the quickness and athleticism to make the plays on the outside. Well, joined by three other Wildcats. Briggs, who just a few minutes ago scared the Dickens out of everybody in the stadium by laying down on the field. Perhaps it was just wind because it looks like the moving parts are all uh, fairly well limbered up right now. Back on the field for Arizona. Now the Wildcats trying to get... Uh, some additional points before they head into the locker room for halftime call their first timeout they've got two remaining and idaho coming up with a third down and nine hoping that they can pick up the first down if nothing else just to keep arizona's offense off of the field wildcats in their home opener they of course have a bye next weekend chance to uh, take a look at two games 120 minutes of football and then after that back at home against Nevada, Las Vegas, a game that we'll have for you. Then Washington State's Cougars open up the Pacific 10 Conference for this season on the 28th day of September. Busy, busy Oregon. There you see, excuse me, month of October, I was going to say. It's the month of Oregon as well. Oregon and Oregon State back-to-back. -back. Washington and then Southern Cal. Then, of course, uh, finish up with the Bay Schools. And then the team yes, from Tempe. There, there it is. Go ahead, mention it. <laughs> the team from Tempe on the 23rd day of the That's run. what the season is all about. Put that on your refrigerator right now. Third down, big play. Lots of pressure and uh, no flag on it. Arizona had the pressure in the backfield and Jarvie Worcester with the coverage in Arizona's defensive backfield. You might ask why Idaho isn't throwing longer passes. That's the reason why the pressure that they are having from this Arizona defense on every play, Alex Luna that time, that he held on the ball much longer, that would have been a sack. Yep. Bobby Wade hoping that uh, Ryan Downs kicks something to him that he can take and gallop around the field tonight. He has not been doing much in the little punt returns. This may be an opportunity. Nope. He's going to fall. And it inadvertently touched. Well, the ball couldn't do it inadvertently. Inadvertently getting in the way was a special teams player for the Vandals. I believe it was number 26. But nonetheless, that was Mr. Ford, number 26. Ball was first touched by the kickers. Ball's placed at that spot. First down 10. Just got caught in the way, and it's Arizona now with pretty good field position with one more shot at the scoreboard. A minute 25 remain in the first half. Arizona leads at 15-0, a successful field goal, and two touchdowns, neither converted. They made a very deliberate attempt to try to keep the ball away from Bobby Wade in return positions, who, who won the Pac-10 return first team last season. Another formation for the Wildcats. Two backs in the backfield, shotgun, throw it. Flags down everywhere. Melosi Leonard hauls it in at the 42-yard line of Idaho. But uh, in that neighborhood, generally speaking, we're going to see a hold, and there you've got the wrist and the point. I'm impressed with the discipline that Melosi Leonard has in running Holy his pass pass. Offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. What happens is a lot of times as receivers get into the football game, they start getting lazy. They start rounding off corners. But this kid here, he's very sharp. He has the same look each and every pass pattern that he runs coming off the line of scrimmage. And that time, did a nice job in making the catch before he went out of bounds. One minute, 19 seconds remain. If, uh, the penalty marches Arizona back, puts him in a first and 20. And Mills trying to direct his blocking around there. And Vandals waiting for him. That 
play look like Idaho Vandals. James Staley that time, number 41, junior college transfer for this team. It looked like he knew what the play was before even Arizona did. Came upfield, did a heck of a job fighting off the block. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a Herculean effort over there by Melosi Leonard. Now, college, oftentimes it's confused. College, you need one leg. In professional football, you need two. Let's perhaps have a replay and see if Melosi came as close as we think he did. And what makes it nice when you're executing an offense and you have the ability to go ahead and spread the ball around to as many different receivers as this Arizona team has? Well, each of these receivers are a little bit different. Some of them are a little bit more of a possession receiver. But they certainly have the skill also to take it the distance. We'll see a steady receiver for the lockout. That time he couldn't uh, get the feet just right. Ball thrown a little bit out of his grasp. Lots of time. Johnson goes underneath again, and that's going to result in a tackle on Leo Mills, and that's short of, uh, well short of the required yardage. Arizona doing a nice job here. Idaho's running his own defense. And look at Mills settle Idaho, down. Idaho. 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 That's Number the two. That's the eighth receiver now that Arizona has thrown to in tonight's game. Well, I believe Melosi heard from uh, Coach Makovic on that design. He was supposed to be elsewhere. Didn't go perhaps where he was supposed to. And as a result, Arizona has got a fourth down coming up. They'll have their punter on the field. We'll get a chance to see this uh, play again. With Jason Johnson, he looks in the middle of the field here, and he sees that there's absolutely no one there. There's no coverage. And credit Mills. He comes downfield. He recognizes a vacuum in the defense and basically just stops and turns around. Johnson did a nice job of recognizing the defense and delivering the pass. Well, we saw a lot of that from uh, Jason. Again, what was his rookie start in San Diego? And had a very good grasp of where his receivers were, ought to be, and if uh, one's covered, get another one. Dave, what's happened in tonight's game that we didn't see last season was the quarterback checking off one, two, three different receivers in the process of throwing the ball. Rainy Peru. And the punt for the Wildcats. Orlando Winston waits, and he may have an opportunity and does to knock him up. Arizona's a uh, punt coverage team down there. Mr. Love, Gary Love there. Johnny on the spot to make the play. And uh, handkerchief on the field. We talked about Gary Love. He knows what it's like to be a returner. He has a 22-yard average on kickoff returns. So anytime that he can get on the other side and deliver the pain, he enjoys it. Well, this may be painful news for Arizona. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, late hit, Kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. You got racked up for some late hits in your career, didn't you? No, I don't think I had any. <laughs> I don't, none that were, oh, oh, my. And your nose is growing on your first oh night my. here. My goodness. Yeah, it's, that used to be an art, hitting guys standing around the pile. Then I got to the National Football League and found out instead of penalties, it was fines. And I had to break that habit. And, and retribution as well. <laughs> That's right. Idaho called the timeout a moment ago, got Arizona on to punt, and now it's the Vandals with a couple of shots with 28 seconds remaining in the half. Idaho trailing 15 nothing to Arizona. And with the number one quarterback, John Welsh, settled in with enough time, launches it up high to Lacey, and the Lacey comes down with the football at the 20-yard line. Well, they called him the go-to guy, all big uh, West receiver last year. Chris Lacey jumped high in the air, and he basically just took the football away from Jermaine Chapman. One thing when you're a defensive back, if you can't get the interception, you have to make certain that the receiver does not come down with the football. Well, Tom Cable's crowd inside. They have uh, got a scoring opportunity here. We'll see if they uh, going to be in the way of a field goal or... Or if they can get to the end zone. 21 seconds remain in the first half. And now Arizona's defense asked by their fans to uh, stand tall. And now a timeout. I believe that's called by Idaho. Timeout. Idaho. Yeah, they had no Our choice. Final timeout. I don't think Tom Cable wanted to use <laughs> that timeout. No, not very happy. Nope. Well, Cable, as you mentioned, was an offensive coordinator at California. 
before he took uh, he went over to uh, Colorado and became, after a year as an offensive line coach, became the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo offense in 99, and they ranked 14th in the NCAA. So not bad for a guy who used to block for other people. I was going to say, what a tremendous journey to go from offensive guard to offensive co coordinator. I, I, most of the offensive guards that I know in my life, I don't envision them as being creative thinkers <laughs> as far as play You're selection. You're going to get yourself in trouble here right now. Well, none of, the, none of the guards that I know live in Arizona, so Very I'm safe. Good. They're all in Chicago. <laughs> in fact, I know when your tackle friends and uh, I'll tell him that you said he wasn't Ted Teddy, but you thought he wasn't very sharp either. All right, well, the cablegram has uh, been sent to the offense, and now the coaching staff clears the field. 21 seconds remain. And Larry McDuff on the other side, going to try to match wits with Tom Cable. You see, uh, no, Larry McDuff, you don't think, he doesn't have carpal tunnel. What's you he got over there? Yeah, we're wondering whether he has somebody helping him with his play selection. Maybe John Makovic gave him that for plays to call during the game. Lots of people set and reset. Lewis across the middle, make that Welsh across the middle. And the incomplete pass, the ball was intended for Rossi Martin. Jermaine Chapman, number 23 for the Wildcats. You can't cover that play better than Jermaine Chapman. He started five of the last six games in last season, but this kid has really picked up some momentum into this, this year. He did very well in spring drills and very, very good man-to-man -man coverage skills. Second down, 17 seconds remain. Welsh, 11 of 18, just under 100 yards. Way in motion to the far side is Lewis. Pump fake. And a catch that time by Franks. To make that O'Connell again. I the second time that big uh, fullback looks like a big tight end with a four on his back as well. Hurry up offense now. It's a third down play. And the Vandals may not get it away to there, did they not? Flag on the field. It, it doesn't appear that their offensive linemen were set. If it's against Arizona, yep. The, time you're exactly out. right. Far to the snap. Halftime. Well, the Vandals aren't happy, and that's why Cable was so upset. That was their last time out. Johnson, 15 of 23 in his debut as a starter at Arizona Stadium, and the Wildcats head into the end zone with this 99-yard touchdown play you saw just a few moments ago. Brandon Marshall into your living room with six of Arizona's 15 points. Both teams in the locker rooms. Arizona with a 15-0 lead at halftime. John Makovic trying to make it uh, a grand tonight in his home opener. Last week, we talked to about his uh, first game as, as an Arizona head coach, and San Diego was successful, and he felt it was important to get that first one in the bag. It's great to win the first game. Uh, I cannot, um, cannot deny that. I, I told myself, now John, just relax here. And, you know, you may not win this first game. And San Diego State had 20 returning starters and definitely should be one of the better teams in their conference. I believed we would win if we did the things we needed to do and our offense didn't just turn the ball over and give them some easy points. And we overcame even that one special teams miscue that we had. But I thought our defense would play well enough to give us a chance to win, and that's exactly what happened. But it was fun watching players play. It was exciting to be on the field, be part of it, knowing that we had worked so long and so hard to get there. And just, I said, enjoying it, I was enjoying it. But I can't say that I didn't have butterflies, <laughs> because I did, because everyone gets a little bit nervous. We don't write the script to how it's going to end. That's what's so great about being in sports. And we don't have a script that we know how, you know, the, the lady gets the guy at the end of the, the show or whatever. We don't know how it's going to end. Well, we may not have a script, but we certainly can't open the file. Head coach, 14th season, eight bowl trips. Don't forget, he was a head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs as well. Two-time Big Ten coach of the year at Illinois, and he had some great years at Texas as well. Well, we'll be back with more of our halftime uh, activities, including some great hard-hitting hits when we come back right after this. You're watching.
watching Fox Sports Net. We're back at halftime at Arizona State, and the Wildcats with a 15-0 advantage, a home opener for Arizona in this 2001 season. People wanted to see a lot of frenzied attack, hard hits. They've seen it all. This game was very intense, both on the offense and the defense, but both offense wasted no time in putting the football up in the air. you notice this time Idaho quickly getting rid of the football, but notice the aggressive hitting by this Arizona defense. And also, who can forget the offensive production that they had converting on that, that long field goal early in the first half? Well, it was the second quarter, you might recall. Bobby Wade dragged down. Arizona got close because of that play. And then Clarence Farmer with his first touchdown of the night. And then it was Michael Jolivet with the big pick that turned it around. Now Arizona had the ball on the one. Andre Thurman goes 99 yards for the touchdown. And that was a big play there. And give some credit to this offensive line. There was a lot of questions going into this season whether that offensive line was going to be able to give the protection, but they certainly came through tonight. Well, they had great protection on that 99-yard play, and they've got to protect enough for another 30 minutes tonight. When we come back, we'll have the halftime statistical data for you right after this. 15 nothing Arizona getting ready for the second half. Before we get there, though, let's take a look at the statistical wrap-up of the first half. And Doug Delock has a pretty good pass tonight, including that 99-yard touchdown pass. Well, the big difference in this game has been the passing yardage. They've been able to gain a lot of yards through the air, and it's been on big plays. If you notice, look at the first downs. Both teams have 11 first downs, but the difference is in passing yards. What's happening is Arizona's passing attack is going downfield versus Idaho instead of just Idaho's trying to pick up first downs. Arizona's going for the points. And both teams combining for 101 yards of penalty. We'll see if uh, they can calm that down just a little bit in the second half. Hard hitting first half. We'll see if the second half is anything like it. Arizona up by 15. We'll have our second half right after these messages. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Entertainment for fans of all ages tonight. And they're happy with their uh, home team tonight. 15 nothing our score at half as uh, Jason Johnson and his uh, colleagues prepare for the second half. And uh, Doug, a pretty good night of distribution for this young man, at least through the first 30 minutes. This was a characteristic of their first game, but they've also been able to follow it up here with the first half. And you'll see the bulk of those receptions going to the wide receivers with five. But he's also thrown to the tight ends and the running backs. And although he's only thrown one pass to the tight end, two to the running back, Look at the average yards per catch on wide receivers. Over about 45 yards, if my math is correct. What an incredible average per catch by the wide receiving core. A lot of that's had to do with the protection he's been able to get, but also the skill of this wide receiving core. Well, that math, uh, I might be uh, calling you as my phone a friend. And we begin the second half with Chris Lacey taking it at his own goal line. First time he's had a chance to run it back, and he does so effectively to the 25-yard line. The second half is officially underway, and Idaho will have the football. Chris Lacey, they really get a lot of mileage out of this kid. He was their leading receiver last year. But this Arizona defense has been able to completely throttle this Idaho offense, putting pressure on the quarterback and starting to cover those wide receivers, wide receivers right as they come off the line of scrimmage. Welsh and crew on first down at the 25. Quick drop back, quick toss to the outside. And a complete for Josh Jellenberg. And Jellenberg is about a half a yard shy of the first down. On first down, will bring second down and short. Jumberg was one of their favorite receivers last year, piling up 44 receptions. But look at the job that he does here on Michael Jolvet. Basically just gives him a swim move, just allows him to go running by. But the Arizona pursuit ends up catching up with him. And I think one of the topics of conversation when they review that play will be the yards he accumulated after the catch and the missed tackle. Well, Chase and gets out of but not that time. Well, he did get out of the grass the first time. Of the Wildcats, I believe it was Alex Luna, but Johnny Jackson came from nowhere and just knocked him straight down. But Johnny Jackson has just equaled his last year total in sacks. Notice how he comes quickly once he realizes where the quarterback is trying to get to the outside. Welsh, you'll see, originally avoids one of the tacklers, but Jackson is not going to allow him to escape to the outside. Well, that big hit 
moves the Vandals about a half yard away from their goal right now, which is a first down. So it's third and a long one now. And they're going to give to Lewis, the workhorse, or make that tenor again, Anthony Tenor, who picked up a tough first down earlier tonight. We'll see how far the senior went that time. 5'9", 206 pounder. And it appears that he Yep, they're going to measure. Why should I guess? Up here. Measurement time. Well, I'm going to guess from here that he got it, but. This is exactly what this Arizona defense is set up to do, to force the runners to go to the outside. They completely fill all the gaps in the inside. That one is too close to call from here, but not too close on the field. They're going to give them the first down. Well, Tom Cable and company with a first down by the hair of their chinny chin chin Arizona defense they have run gap responsibilities they are not allowed vertical separation in terms of holes you notice how they force the running back to the outside that time Anthony Tenner though that extra effort is what picked up that first down ball at the 36 yard line and it's Welsh with more time this time dumps it to Lacey Lacey's bashed after a three-yard pickup, ball to the 39-yard line, where it'll be second down. Lacey's trying to figure out where he's at. Am I in Idaho? What state is it? <laughs> Lance Briggs. Again, they ran this play earlier in the first half, <laughs> but Lance Briggs came in and, and basically unloaded every pound that he had in his body that time. He, he loves those plays. Defensive backs, you guys never change. Just like seeing that stuff. <laughs> Second down at the 39, seven to go for the Vandals. Welsh, Cross, Blair Lewis with room. Blair Lewis out of bounds, but not before. He picks up the first down out at the 49-yard line. And the Vandals move the chains again. It was Jarvie Worcester belted him into his own sideline. There was no way that the Arizona defense was going to stop. They were outmanned on the outside. Idaho overloaded that left side of the field. And plus, they managed to get several good blocks out there on the perimeter. You'll see on the outside, allowing Blair Lewis to basically cut through that hole and pick up another first down. Well, the aforementioned to Mr. Lewis with 53 yards over 12 carries so far tonight. They've got one in motion coming at you on first down. And a quick little throw again. Boom, right down to the floor. The man in motion, Belzer, a junior, with the pass and the good coverage by Brandon Nash. You can tell just watching that tackle, Brandon Nash, good size, 6'1", 215. He is a strong physical defender. Very difficult to try to run away once he gets in the grasp. Also, he's a pretty intelligent kid. He was first team all academic Pac-10 last season. So, once again, well-rounded individual. Second down for Idaho, trailing by 15. And that time, he was just too quick. He seemed to be a little bit groggy toward the end of the uh, first half, but uh, Lance Briggs makes Larry McDuff smile. Well, he hasn't smiled quite yet, but one time there will be a grin there. Trust me. Perfect anticipation. Notice how he times up the blitz coming from several yards off the line of scrimmage, and Welsh had nowhere to go. He didn't even realize that Briggs was on top of him. He did a good job just to hold on to the football. He very nearly beat the snap, and I'm talking off the tee there. Three sacks for 14 yards. Third down play, third and 12. And the quick out. Lewis effective with that patch pass completed. However, there is a flag on the play. Belzer with the catch. The flag is thrown at the 47-yard line across the way. An eligible receiver, and that will negate that pass play. This has to start wearing on their quarterback, Welsh, because every time that he goes back to pass, he's getting knocked on the ground. And it's a lot of times when you're on defense, it's not just the sacks. It's a number of times you can put the quarterback down on the ground. It impacts his willingness to go back there. Ineligible can... receiver, downfield offense. Yep. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, Idaho's now sending more people downfield <laughs> than they need to, but that's one of the frustrations. I think they've almost completely tried to focus now on that quick passing attack 
to pick up yardage. Well, Tom Cable wants to make a statement right now. Puts John Welsh back onto the field. Arizona declined the penalty and set up a fourth down and four at the 44-yard line. And Cable says, heck, we'll Arizona, go for that. You're going to give that to one. us. We'll take it. So now the Wildcats are in a situation to call timeout. And I believe Arizona's thinking, well, it'll be fourth and long. We'll get the ball back right now. But Tom Cable double-crossed him. Well, we're going to let the brain trusts of both teams think about it. We'll have answers for you when we come back. 13... Uh, Well, the Vandals back onto the field trying to spray paint any type of score upon the board right now. 15-0. Arizona leads. 10 minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Arizona refused the penalty on a completed pass. Sets up the fourth and four. Welsh. Lost it up. And it's out of bounds, and uh, the Vandals want a pass interference call. They don't get it. Arizona takes over at the 44-yard line. Rossi Martin was the intended receiver. And David Chat Chapman was there. We'll give some credit to Chapman because he completely shut the receiver down. He basically pinned him across the against the out-of-bounds, and the receiver actually stepped out of bounds before the ball. You'll see his left foot actually touched the out-of-bound marker before the ball even arrived. That play had absolutely no chance for success. Well, Arizona's defense off. Their offense is on. And very quick. Pitch play. That's Clarence Farmer. Farmer uh, with his first carry of the second half. Clarence with a seven-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. Yeah, Farmer last year was a freshman All-American. He's the U of A all-time freshman leader with over 600 yards and a five-yard average. And this guy has just continued to do it year after year. Now there's been some pretty good running backs, some as freshmen in this program over the past five years. You know, he didn't get to play as a freshman a long time ago. Farmer again reads his blocks, gets into the backfield, drags a couple with him, and he's finally brought down at the 36-yard line, a first down for Arizona. They're starting to take advantage of the Idaho defensive line. They're on, on gap penetration. In other words, their defensive linemen are, are instructed right now to get across the line of scrimmage. It leaves them vulnerable for the trap. Notice the linemen from Arizona kicking the blockers out, allowing Farmer a huge holder run through. And the rest is all his individual effort in running over defenders. Clarence, six times tonight, 44 yards and the touchdown. On first down. Toss sweep to Clarence. Will be end around. Yep, with the low left. Wants the pass. It's broken up. And nearly is it intercepted. No. End around. On the reverse. Melosi Leonard's first passing attempt of the year he is knocked down by Sergio Robletto. There you see the beginnings of it. When you have a defense that's very aggressive, misdirection is one of the ways that you can attack the defense, but that time it appeared that Idaho almost knew what that play was going to be before it was run, but that's something else for the future defenses in the pack then to think about. Give them all they can think about. Here's Clarence. Kind of got lost in there. He'll bring a third down. May have picked up uh, three yards and be third down and seven. Despite the previous call not working, I, I do like the call. I think it keeps the defense on their toes. They don't know what to expect. Instead of just running into a very conservative philosophy with a 15-point lead, Arizona still continuing to try to attack the defense and do it with a number of different plays that Idaho wouldn't be expecting. Third down for Arizona. The ball spotted on the 32-yard line. Johnson throws, completes. It's Bobby Wade, and Wade has the first down inside the 25-yard line. They mark it at the 22 and a half. Mark Tim Sam, the free safety, made the stop for the Vandals. So this is one of the most difficult pass patterns to try to cover. It's a crossing route. Bobby Wade was able to get to the outside and 
That ball was perfectly thrown that time by Johnson, putting it right where Wade had to have it to pick up the first down. Well, Jason used eight different receivers in the first half. He picks up with uh, Wade on that play. Nice spin move by Farmer, and he'll pick up five yards. When you're influencing the defense on these draw plays, the offensive line is the key to make it work. If they do not act like it's going to be a pass pattern, notice how the offensive linemen are all backing up like they're in pass protection. That's a perfect opportunity then to hand the football off to a running backs like Farmer to allow him to go ahead and find the holes and get into secondary. Well, we talked about it before the game started in the open. 24 passes, 16 rushes, a pretty good balance right now. Difference of eight. Instruments uh, calculated out. That ball off the hands of Leonard and nearly into the defensive hands of Idaho. Kramer would have been the recipient of that gift. Kramer is all over the field tonight. Unfortunately, he's getting way too many opportunities to make plays. And you can see that that ball had to be rifled right in there for Melosi Leonard to come down with that reception. But that's a dangerous pass, especially if it gets hit up in the air. Third down for the Wildcats. And a reminder, place kicking has not been a joy tonight. Johnson looks to the end zone. All alone was Andre Thurman. The loneliest man in the stadium. Andre Thurman matched up against Jordan Kramer is a mismatch. Thurman is much quicker than Kramer at six foot two inches. And this is a route that he sold the inside route before he came back to the outside. And that's Thurman doing a great job of selling the post route and then breaking it off for the corner. And give some credit to Johnson also. He made certain that he didn't overthrow the football, just made sure that he had an opportunity to make the catch. Wide open was he. Arizona now ahead 21-0. Sean Field trying to make a conversion for the first time tonight and does. All right, one of three points after, but Thurman much happier along with this kid, Johnson. He's got another touchdown pass. Arizona leads at 22 0. Well, Jason Johnson talking to his. Uh, Receiver core. They just came down with six points. Little post corner route by Andre. All alone. And when you're a defensive back at that area of the field, you must take away all inside routes. So you are vulnerable for exactly that type of a route. And John Makovic knows that. Defensive backs, linebackers are taught to take away all inside routes. Well, we were very happy with 176 yards last week. Well over 200 this week, and we got more to go. Here's a kickoff from Slap. Well into the end zone. Chris Lacey takes the knee. The Vandals get the ball on 20-yard line. Good job by Mr. Slap. 7.44 remains in the third quarter. Dave sitting along with Doug Plank. There you see Andre Thurman. Their receiving core has been so productive today. They're making the most of not just the throws, but give a lot of credit. The balls are in positions where at least the receivers have opportunities to make the catches. But some of the moves that we've seen tonight by this receiving core has been very impressive. And I want to correct myself as Brandon Marshall is being uh, addressed by Rob Ionella, the receiver's coach here at Arizona along the sideline. Back to the offense for the Vandals, Blair Lewis with the run he picks up five second and five the scoring drive for arizona eight plays 56 yards took him two minutes 57 seconds and johnson's 19 yard pass to thurman second and five lewis got banged gets up runs again i'll tell you what this is a great run and he just does trickle out of bound at the 40 jarvey worcester save the day otherwise he's going vertical Blair Lewis looked like he should be in the Hall of Fame with that run great lead block notice how he follows the blocking and keeps his balance by putting his left arm down and then does a pirouette I'm not sure who that was uh, by one of the Arizona defenders and uh, 
great effort that time by Blair Lewis, though. Just continued Jermaine Chapman coming up, trying to make the tackle and miss it. So the junior college transfer out of Pasadena City College picks up the first down. Meanwhile, Walsh dumps it, and it trickles out of the grasp of Willie Sokoloa, the freshman fullback. It's kind of a surprise last-minute uh, receiver on the play. That brings up second down and 10. Uh, it's surprising that he did, made a decision to go ahead and throw it to Sipaloa because he's basically a running back, or a running back, a blocking fullback, not very accustomed to having receptions coming out of the backfield, but, which just shows some of the frustration. He has to sprint out of the pocket, and he's throwing those two- and three-yard routes just to get the ball. Second and ten. Lots of time in the pocket. Right down the middle, Josh. Jellenberg with the reception and they'll move the chains again. The Vandals inside Arizona territory. Tell you what, even though it's a 22 nothing score, if they're uh, hanging around. Well, one thing on this play, he had more time sitting back in the pocket. Notice him moving around and Jellenberg has a 14 yard average per reception and it's because of having time back in the pocket to be able to deliver the ball. He had about a five-step drop that time, and then he was able to come inside, step up inside the pressure. That time, maybe not. Yes, he's done it again. And a flag, and it's late. And we'll see if it's uh, possibly Keone Frazier with a late hit. That is our preliminary indication. Now, Keone is the one uh, nearly got him. Let's see what we got here. John Welsh has to be wondering how many guys do they have over there on that defense. They keep coming in here trying to hit me, but that <laughs> looked like intentional ground. An eligible receiver downfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, it was Keone Frazier who put the pressure on Welsh. And, and he doesn't have to get the sack. It's the pressure that he put on that forced that bad decision that time by John Welsh. But notice how Frazier quickly avoids the blocker, and he's on Welsh so fast he doesn't even have time to make a decision. The ineligible receiver downfield, repeat the down, although uh, I believe he's supposed to lose the down. It's uh, first down again, five yard penalty. They give it. it was a good play fake. Blair Lewis had it. The Rockets wrap them up. What's impressive about the effort tonight? That time Lance Briggs and also Alex Luna on the tackle. Very few times tonight have we seen just one Arizona defender make the tackle. It's generally been in groups. And when you start getting that kind of effort out of your defense on each and every play, good things start happening. Now the swarming effect noticed by the Vandals. Arizona comes with the blitz, and it works. It was Briggs who caused the greatest amount of disruption, and then Anthony Thomas made the tackle. There's old Anthony. 290-pounder out of Pas Pasadena. Notice Briggs here in the middle of the screen. He's the one that starts this play off to the left-hand side. Again, he's on top of Welsh before he knows it. He tries to spin out, but Thomas also had beaten his man, not allowing him to get to the corner. And this, this defense is starting to play on the Idaho side of the football rather than downfield. Pasadena, a destination uh, Don McEvick in this program is interested in seeing on a January 1 basis. By the way, with that sack, Arizona now has four of them tonight. Delay 20 game. yards. Offense, five-yard penalty. And now the Still penalty down. start to rack up. That is the seventh penalty now, 56 yards. This Idaho squad was just haunted last week. They had 11 penalties during the course of their game against Washington State. If I'm not mistaken, Anthony Thomas, is that not his second sack of the game? That would equal his entire last year's production with two sacks. So he's he's coming to play. Third down and 30 yards to go for the first down. This is long yardage, folks, and it's uh, not going to be realized as Arizona comes in again. And it's Alex Luna 
who comes in from the left end for the fifth sack. What was not coordinated, notice he only takes a three-step drop. The receivers, though, are running deep patterns. They're running down the field. You can't stay three yards off the line of scrimmage and allow your receivers to get open when they're running 20 and 25-yard routes. Luna's having a heck of a game. Ryan Downs, the punter, stands inside the 20. And knocks it away, Bobby Wade. He's going to give it a try. And that's all he gives it. Good coverage by the special teams. Tolbert and company in on the tackle for Idaho. But Arizona's defense stymies the Vandals. The Wildcats have the ball with 3.59 to go in the third quarter. Bobby Wade and uh, the offensive unit will be back in just a minute. Welcome back to Arizona Stadium. I'm Dave Sitton uh, with Doug Plank and our Fox Sports Net crew and the Wildcats on offense on first down. Clarence Farmer swung around, around, goes to go, and down he goes. We see uh, Bobby Way. We saw that uh, special teams unit of uh, the Vandals uh, so effective a moment ago. There you go. That can't feel that good. I know Bobby Wade wants to have big things happen each and every time he touches the ball. What last week he had a 58-yard punt return, I think. But this guy is accustomed to doing great things, but there are times when it's best just to go ahead and call the fair catch. Discretion oftentimes being the better part of Valor. 53 yards for Clarence Farmer, who lines up in the backfield for Arizona, along with Mike Detweiler. Play action pass coming up from the 15 yard line. The intended receiver is James Hugo. And he is the successful receiver. Hugo and the Wildcats with a first down. Well, John Makovic loves this kid. He's a, a big kid at 6'6, but he likes him because he doesn't drop balls. Time after time in practice, they throw the ball to this kid and he makes a catch. And what quarterback wouldn't, allow, wouldn't love a 6'6 target running through the secondary? We got uh, Hugo at 6'6", and then behind him, Justin Levasseur, who has uh, caught the fancy of several of the coaches as well, 6'5", and then 6'8", oh, Peter Hansen plays in that rotation from time to time as well, and tied in for Arizona. Here's Farmer. Tried to get over the left tackle and uh, got a yard. By the way, back to that tight end position, and that distribution pattern for Johnson tonight. Hugo has three receptions for 20 yards and a moment ago. One good for a first down. Farmer now 11 carries, 54 yards on the night. And you get the impression he may break just one of those and get his 100 yards on the night. He's been close. And I, I would expect him to see him come out of the backfield too. Last week he had a reception. So he also is a capable receiver coming out of the backfield. Second down. Bootleg. Again, it's Hugo, but this time the Vandals prepared for the reception. Completed pass, but it loses a yard. And that'll bring up about a third down and ten for the Wildcats. The Vandals did a very good job that time in spreading their defense out along the line of scrimmage. They had the run covered, although Arizona ran a play-action pass. They were anticipating it. Arizona has fallen into the mode here the last quarter of running a lot of play-action. And Idaho's coach there, Cable, is anticipating and putting his defense in schemes so that they're prepared for that short play action passes. Third down. Johnson has plenty of space and time and a receiver. And Leonard has the first down inside Bendel territory. What makes Jason Johnson so effective? When you look at him as a safety, you, you think he's throwing into other areas of the field. He scans the field before he throws the ball. Notice how he was looking to his left-hand side. That affects defensive backs downfield. Then suddenly turns to his right-hand side and rifles the football. It's a, a great throw. Once again to Leonard. Makes a nice catch, sure-handed catch. Make sure he gets the reception. First down for the Wildcats at the 46-yard line of Idaho. Arizona trying to throw a knockout punch now, leading 22-0. Sweep, and here's the big run right here. Farmers dances inside the 25-yard line. That was set up very nicely around that left end. One of the key blocks on that play was Bobby Wade downfield, and he sealed off the outside so that when Clarence Farmer took it to the outside, he had a running lane. You'll see 
Bobby Wade in the middle of your screen there, tying up one of the Idaho defenders, and the rest is all Farmer. Downfield cuts in the effort in trying to run over several defenders. Yeah, also on that offensive blocking, Brandon Marshall, you saw number six also applying some good blocks as well. And he stays on his feet, battles around, squiggles and squirms, and uh, another first down for Clarence and the Cats. You have to wonder what's going through his mind when he gets the ball. Should I run through the defenders or should I run around the defenders? <laughs> this, this guy has the choice, and he has the speed and the strength to be able to do either one, and that's what makes it so deceiving. A lot of times you get your hands on him, you think he's going down, but he's got great balance. Well, a couple of plays later, and find him with 88 yards, closing in on the century. Johnson, by the way, with 305 tonight. Here's Mill crashing through the left side and now the Wildcats are just throwing blows on each and every play at Idaho and you can just see after the ball is snapped at Doug the, uh, the Vandals are, are headed south and they're pointed north Leo Mills he's already accounted for in one game in Arizona 286 all-purpose yards so this guy is the whole package but it's nice to have some alternatives instead of continuing to give the ball to Farmer it's nice having somebody like Mills that you can stick in there and be so effective second down and four is going to be well we saw that play a couple of years ago up in washington good for a touchdown clarence uh, farmer is going to be in the highlight reel with that somersault but he didn't quite make the end zone hung on <laughs> and uh, we'll see if he's got enough for the first down and that would make it first and goal but we'll check and see in just a second that was pretty impressive it's amazing when running backs corner. get close to the line of scrimmage what they will do to get into the end zone i think it's a good point uh, john welsh uh, John Walsh, rather, our producer suggests that uh, with that to dismount, uh, he may get some good uh, marks from all the European judges for form and also for velocity. But on originality, no. We've seen I, I it would before. agree, yeah. But that does punctuate the third quarter. That's the end of it. The Wildcats just a little ways away from another score. We'll see if they can get it right after this break. You're watching Fox Sports Net. You've seen 45 minutes of this game. Arizona with a 22-0 advantage. Let's check in on the statistical data accumulated thus far. Arizona now pulling away in virtually every category. And they double up and then some on total yardage. Those passing yards, and I know that John McAvick wants a balanced it's offense, but you, you can't tell his receivers don't gain the yards once they get downfield. First and goal for the Wildcats. Who's going to get the call? Clarence? Yes. Touchdown. That was too easy. You, you would definitely not expect that kind of an easy effort in getting into the end zone inside the five-yard line. Arizona makes it 28-0. Farmer with the second touchdown of the night. Look at the job the offensive line is doing, though, in pushing the Idaho defenders off the line of scrimmage. Look at the job on the right-hand side in particular. They just powered their way into the end zone. And, yes, you are seeing number 14, Peter Hansen, into the ball game, other than as a pick blocker. Play tight end on that on the left side. Wildcats now, as a result of the uh, touchdown, will uh, attempt the conversion. So far tonight, one of three in conversions. One of two for field goals, and then Sean Field. Not an issue. So Johnson holds, field kicks, Arizona adds a point. 29-0 over the Idaho Vandals. And Doug, we were talking earlier about your wonderful charts there. Let's go back to them. Well, the wide receivers have continued to be the leader in terms of receptions, but look at the tight ends. They were, at halftime, only had one reception. 
and now they've got four, and, and you'd have to believe that John Makovic, in realizing that he wants to try to keep everything balanced between running and passing, also is trying to do the same thing with his receiving core. And that includes the wide receivers, the tight ends, as well as the running backs. But I'll tell you this, as a former defensive safety, it is so difficult trying to defense against teams that have tight ends that are capable of making catches downfield because they can threaten you on the deep ones as well as the short routes and and uh, it just adds a ho another whole dimension to your passing offense and, and part of the su success of their passing attack tonight I think is because of the job their quarterback has done in terms of distributing the ball around but also in looking everywhere we talked about the play selection notice how he's almost balanced equally between the passes and the rushes which makes it very difficult when you're a defensive coordinator looking at a team that's this balanced well, some good running in that previously well-balanced offense. Farmer with the uh, touchdown for Arizona. And you see Mr. Rote, who may uh, see some action tonight. There was uh, rumors that we might see all three Arizona quarterbacks tonight, so we'll see if we see Mr. Watkins and John Rote. Ryan Slack has done a wonderful job kicking the ball for Arizona tonight. Looking at Chris Lacey, who waits for Idaho. This one will be returned, and it is Lacey at the two with some room and a block. And he's run out of bounds just outside the 30-yard line. Mark him at the 35 on the nose, and that's where the Vandals will go to work. Let's take a look at that scoring drive one more time. Arizona took him three seconds into the uh, fourth quarter. However, the entire drive took four minutes and two seconds, 10 plays, 76 yards, a most impressive drive. Runs by Clarence Farmer, who's getting very close to the 100 yard mark. John Welsh was hanging in there tonight. And then some, but now he hung in a little too long that time. And a perfect coverage sack that time. And I know you'll be proud of that, Duck. He has to understand and have an internal clock that you cannot continue to hold on to the football back in the pocket once you get past four or five seconds. And Welsh continues to look down the field. He has, he has to realize that this pocket is collapsing around. And there's nobody in a white jersey without a fellow with a blue jersey around him downfield. Toss sweep. Blair Lewis is hit after a pickup of a yard. And that'll bring up third down and uh, double digits for Idaho. And of course, this is the time where you'd expect a team that's uh, been in the Pacific 10 Conference since the late 70s to uh, take advantage of a team that's uh, relatively new to 1A football. Tom Cable, sir, yeah, Tom Cable certainly is not enjoying himself tonight here at Arizona State. Third and 10. Welsh just does get it away, and a great reception at the other end by Chris Belzer. Boy, tell you what, Welsh and company wiggled off the hook that time, and they're in smoother waters as they get down to the 28-yard line of Arizona on that pass play. And why he's able to make this play successful, he was only back in the pocket for three seconds before he was able to release the ball to Belzer heading down the sideline. And Look at how many defenders were around him had he held on the ball even one more second. He knows on the last three play as well that he once again found himself on the turf after the play. Good spin, good move, good run by Blair Lewis. Knocked out of bounds after a pickup of about five yards. Well, the Vandals, I'll tell you what, it's... Uh, Coaches are angered easily when you talk about moral victories, but this uh, Vandal team tonight compliments them. They are not quitting, and they are going to give their coaching staff and themselves and their fans 60 minutes tonight. And they're really doing a pretty decent job of running against this Arizona defense that was only giving up an average of 1.4 yards per carry last week. So they've done a decent job in moving the ball in the ground. Second down. flags and they come flying from all directions. Josh Jellenberg 
Just running a little post. And he was hit prior to the arrival of the ball, and that'll give pretty good field position for the Vandals. It's going to be interesting who they flag on this one. Number 23, Jermaine Chapman, was coming from the outside. He's the one that actually deflected the ball away. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, those booing haven't seen this yet. Let's take a look ourselves. And Welsh was eyeballing him the entire way. It looked like... Uh, I, I, from my standpoint, Jermaine Chapman looked like he came through and was able to cleanly deflect that ball away. But there may have been some contact before the ball actually arrived on the spot. Well, regardless of how we all see it, we see how the referee saw it. <laughs> well, I, I might retract. Re yeah. That was a much better angle. There was definitely some contact on that one. First and goal on the eight-yard line for the Vandals. A quick throw, and it's effective. Into the end zone goes Idaho for the first time tonight. And Rossi Martin is the pass catcher. And the Vandals are on the scoreboard. And we'll see if they uh, want to uh, pick up a pair. No, they're going to go for the... Uh, single placement. Yeah, Martin's kind of interesting. He makes a nice catcher. He had a very productive year in 1999, and for some reason they redshirted him last season. But he's been the leading receiver last week in terms of numbers of receptions, but yeah, they like his size and good acceleration. Junior Keith Stamps. Looks that one clean in between the posts. 29-7 now is our score. 12-33 are men in the game. The Vandals, uh, they haven't left town yet. on the scoreboard with the touchdown just a moment ago. They pull within 29-7. And Brian Pope is going to re-tee his football. Well, Gary Love and Bobby Wade, I'm sorry, down the other end of the field. Yeah, on that touchdown pass, you can't say it was a surprise. They've been going to that quick slant pattern the entire evening. That's a little poochie affair. Procedure against the Vandals kicker Brian Pope. And the Wildcats, of course, have an option and they're going to most likely take the ball with a good field position. Let's make it official, shall we? And by the way, making it official now, it's uh, Cliff Watkins. The sophomore out of Breckenridge, Texas, will be in the huddle for Arizona, calling signals this series. Free kick, out of bounds, option selected, 35-yard line. First down. Could have done that a little while ago. Part, part of the success for this Idaho or, or failure to, to have success is, is their lack of protection back. You'll notice here when this play unfolds that he's sitting back in the pocket at least five seconds for pressure, allowing the uh, defense for Arizona to come in and put pressure on him. Watkins' first play from scrimmage is thrown behind Bobby Wade. take Gary Love, I beg your pardon. I'm, I think you're right. It's time for the glasses, once and for all. So Love, <laughs> back uh, to visit with Cliff. 6'4", 220 pounders. We mentioned the sophomore. Getting a little PT tonight. And the Texan up for second down. Yeah, for Farmer, around the right side with some room on his feet. First down, out of bounds, near the 35-yard line, flag out of bounds. Expect a face mask or perhaps a late hit on Mr. Kramer, and that will attack on some more yardage for the Wildcats. If you want to look good as a quarterback, hand the ball off to that guy. <laughs> Forget about throwing. It's much easier just to hand the ball off because he'll probably get just as many yards. Personal foul, 15-yard face mask, defense. Oh, that Penalty was... from the end of the run, automatic first down. Not the cheapy five-yard one. That's the big one. We see Farmer breaking tackles as he gets down the field. 
And unfortunately for Idaho, they end up yanking on the face mask one more time. Jordan Kramer coming over the top, grabbing a hold of the face mask. Farmer now, by the way, has eclipsed his uh, performance in week one. He has 114 yards tonight. Watkins is going to attempt his second pass. Fires outside, complete this time. And knocked out of bounds with the football is Lance Welfer, the sophomore from Houston. Quarterback Cliff Watkins, he's the only quarterback Arizona recruited in 1999. But they like him because of his physical presence in the, in the pocket. He's a big kid, tall enough to overlook many of the linemen, offensive and defensive linemen, and also has the arm strength to get the ball down the field. Well, when he was in high school, he worked option most of the time. He had a pretty good wing as well. Give it straight ahead. All of that for Leo Mills. enough of a difference in terms of his running style when you're a defensive linebacker or safety coming up to make the tackle and you're going against different running backs a lot of times you take different angles but <laughs> Mills this time I don't believe he was even well he might have been touched by Kramer on his way to the end zone but that was just a love tap Sean Peel out of the hole of Jason Johnson Pretty darn straight. Well, Watkins' first uh, series as a quarterback here at Arizona State results in a touchdown for Leo Mills. Arizona extends the lead 36 to 7. Leo Mills with a touchdown just moments ago. Be giving Arizona a 36-7 advantage over the Vandals, who finally just got on the scoreboard moments ago. Here's the kickoff. It's a little bit far for Blair Lewis. Again, another outstanding placement for Ryan Slack. Place kick into the end zone again. And, and the Vandals start at the 20-yard line. Yeah, you cannot discount how important that play is. Watching a game today between Fresno State and Wisconsin at the beginning of the second half, they kick the ball off. Fresno State returns it for a touchdown. The game was never the same. The Wisconsin looked back the entire second half. Idaho. Now, if I tell you three weeks ago that Fresno State would knock <laughs> Fresno out State. Oregon State and then no. go back and beat Wisconsin. Absolutely no way. Let me tell you about the scoring drive. Four plays, 65 yards, and then six it took Arizona. And the first play, cost out of bounds. Belzer was the intended receiver, and John Welsh, uh, the senior. As I mentioned at the top of the show, he was the most valuable player of the Humanitarian Bowl a couple of years ago when Idaho had such a grand season. This year, they're off to a bit of a tough start. They had lost last week. And an odd circumstance is, uh, for those of you who follow the Pac-10 or have been up to the uh, Moscow-Pullman area, you know that Moscow-Idaho is just a, uh, across the street from the eight, Pullman. Eight miles. Missed oh, tackle, and that's going to allow the receiver to get downfield. That was Ethan Jones, and he picks up the first down. Arizona moving some uh, other folks into the lineup now. Jones has been a big part of their offense over the last couple of years. Last year, he piled up 30 receptions and five touchdowns. But one of those receivers that has good height, be able to reach up, take the ball away from defenders. You saw there how he's able to escape many times tackles. On first down. Welsh steps up in the pocket, and that ball is tipped up by the receiver who is uh, knocked out of bounds by Michael Jolivet. Incomplete pass. Winston was the intended receiver. And that brings up second down and 10. Will you take a look at the total yards tonight? It's a mismatch. Although, especially in the passing category, when you take a look at the difference between Idaho and Arizona, and Idaho has probably completed just as many passes as Arizona, but it's the yards per catch which is the big difference. Quick count and a toss sweep. And there's room for Blair Lewis. And I believe.
believe it was Worcester who made the hit. Now there's a flag thrown very late. And I believe it is. I believe it's going to be against the Vandals. You don't see that very often. I believe it's Ethan Jones who uh, knocked around a Wildcat after that play had completed. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, offense. 15 yards from the end of the run, and it's still first down. They're uh, not going to like that on the film. They don't like it now much either. And Coach Tom Cable is having one long night. He knew this team was going to have to play hard tonight, but he didn't want any unnecessary roughness. Good contact that time by Arizona, making contact with the running back, but we're not going to get a chance to see the personal foul, I don't believe. Arizona is forcing these guys to run outside, but Dave, they're getting a chance to get around the corner. First and 10, straight up the middle. Here comes Lewis, still on his feet. Picks up around eight, maybe nine yards. Okay, we'll check on Mr. Lewis and find out uh, how much uh, yardage this uh, young man has gained tonight because he has been busy. Well, he had 50 yards last week on seven carries. He's had at least seven carries alone in this half. But you can see with the manner in which he's conducting himself down there, he's running with a purpose. This guy is running with a vengeance. Second down and one, multiple shift prior to the snap. Option, Lewis, space, first down. Wow, stop man over there as the lock gets uh, Bringing in some new personnel here, trying to get as many people uh, prepared for the Pac-10 as possible. We'll get on that uh, play was a Harrius Johnson, and also in on the play was Robert Ramsey, defensive lineman. Had some snaps here tonight. You would think that Idaho would be putting the ball in the air, trying to get back in the game, but they seem very comfortable going with this running attack. Well, you get the impression uh, they're preparing for the Sun Belt Conference. they got a Pac-10 team on the field. This game is uh, presumably numerically out of reach as far as the scoreboard is concerned, but I think it's a good work done. Good pass, not down. Timed perfectly. The hits on Josh Jumberg. Jarvi Worcester was one of the hitters, and the other was Jermaine Chapman. So they do a good job knocking that ball free. Yeah, Jarvie Worcester came in, and he made sure that this was not going to be a catch. And as I said, your primary responsibility as a defensive back is not get the interception. It's make sure the receiver does not come down with the ball. And Worcester at that time certainly lived up to his details of his, of his job description. Cats had to change a couple linebackers. I get them off the field quickly, and they do just in time. Anthony Tenner, tailback for the Vandals, picks up about four yards, bring up a third down play for the Vandal. Trailing 36-7 with nine minutes remaining in the home opener for Arizona and in the first road game of the year for the Vandals. Finishing up that thought about Mark Stadium. The Vandals come down, as you say, the eight clicks from uh, Moscow. They used Mark Stadium as their home stadium the last weekend when they opened there. They wore the dark jerseys of Washington State who actually owned the facility were white. Visiting team on the day, home team usually got the win. Toss across the middle with a long time to think about it. They finally get the ball to Chris Belzer, who picks up a first down just outside the 20-yard line, 21-yard line, make it first and 10 for Idaho. That's an indication of how easy it is. John Welsh back in the pocket. He's looking, he's looking. Look how many times he's looked at different receivers and finally unloads it. It makes it much easier as a quarterback when you have seven seconds back in the pocket to find open receivers. First down for the Vandal. Welsh being blitzed and he never saw it coming. Boy, did he get whacked. Coming in without so much as a uh, touch that time. It was Harris Johnson again coming in from that uh, safety position. Johnson came very hard off the outside corner. Last year he had one sack for the entire season. So he's already equaled that record. But the Arizona defense has decided to start getting aggressive. For those who stop vandals, Golovet 
Greg and Worcester, pretty impressive numbers tonight. Lots of pressure on Walsh again to the end zone. He goes, and he gets his second touchdown. This time it was to Chris Lacey. And the senior from San Jose with the second touchdown for Idaho tonight, 36 to 13 now. Lacey came down the field and he found a seam in the end zone to the inside. And that's a much easier throw for the quarterback to make. You'll see Welsh looking to the inside and leads Lacey perfectly right down that seam. Stamps mails it in. 14 points for Idaho now and 36 for Arizona with eight minutes and seven seconds remaining. And we'll take the timeout. Idaho, hang it in there. You can too. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, this isn't exactly a New England, so uh, the boys are getting a little bit of cooling. A special fan. I'd like to have a couple of those. Hope with the kickoff, and he knocks this one for six streak, and they're going to bring it out. Here's Gary Love across the 10, and he does a tumble. Well, the Wildcats bring their tumbling squad tonight. We've seen Farmer with one. Now Love has one. I'll tell you what, uh, you want to hear, not just see, but hear how special teams sound. Have a listen. There was a hit. <laughs> you heard some plastic on plastic down there prior to the hit that uh, tumbled Love. Some of the most intense players on football teams play on those special teams. It's it's a suicide squad. I've always loved those people. All right, John Rattay is in the ball game. The first snap he'll take is the Wildcats. The lefty has his pass blocked. So John played high school in Phoenix, went to Tennessee, played it to Desert Vista, went to Tennessee, then left that program, came here and redshirted, and still listed as a freshman. John, the southpaw, very well regarded because the third Wildcat quarterback seen tonight. Cliff Watkins got his chance, and uh, with a couple of good passes and some excellent running by Clarence Farmer, his uh, series resulted in a touchdown. Give is to Tremaine Cox. He may have picked up a yard. The Vandals went 10 plays, 80 yards, three minutes. Nine seconds removed from the clock. Welsh, the 20 yard pass to seal the score. I think it's safe to say that both defenses have left the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it seems that way. You are accurate in describing that. There's going to be a lot of yardage jump up before this night's done, and we got seven minutes and 17 seconds yet to go. Okay. With time and a receiver, and a no foul called on that. Love was the intended receiver. Incomplete. That brings up a fourth down for Arizona. He had Love open, but he ended up leading him to the outside, allowing the defender enough time to go ahead and close on the football. Had he been able to throw that ball a little bit shorter and more directly, you'll see he floats it out to the outside. And, and defensive backs in college are quick enough to react on this long of a throw. Ramey Peru. That one low is going to get a bounce uh, or two, and Arizona's going to watch it trickle down to the 54 yard line. So the Wildcats uh, return their defensive unit onto the field. Mr. Wells and company will soon uh, be huddling just off the 34 yard line of Idaho with Arizona leading. 36-14, six minutes and 57 seconds remain. There you see the Vandals got their whole offensive crew now. This is a chance to get on the scoreboard again and get themselves ready for their next contest, which, by the way, they will face Montana next week in Montana. Wildcats with their own ship after that. Oh, my goodness. Quite effective. There's Briggs in the backfield again. 
somebody else wants the ball. That's Alex Luna says that no, this is now my ball, but the referee said no, they're still on offense. Give credit to the Arizona defense. Look at the shift that they performed just before the ball is snapped. And Briggs, again, realizing it's going to be a quick slant pattern, gets up in the air. Welsh realizes he has nowhere to go. And had it not been for Briggs, there were several other defenders. Was that Alex Luna again? <laughs> he, yeah. He's made a living in that backfield tonight. Seven sacks for the Wildcats tonight, and uh, we know about as much as you there. I'm trying to identify a number for you. Would you talk to you? It might be, um, well, I'll tell you what, it might be um, Vince Bayula. We talked about this Idaho team playing Montana next week, Dave, but they've got to feel like they're playing in the Pac-10. They played Washington State last week. Arizona, of course, this week, and in two weeks, they end up playing Washington, I believe, in Washington. I believe you are correct, and then you are, as a matter of fact, at Montana and then at the Husky Stadium, and it's actually Young Thompson who is shaken up down in the field. So this uh, man with uh, this squad this year with the Pac-10, uh, three Pac-10 schools on his schedule, and then to repeat, the Vandals, for football only, have joined the Sun Belt Conference, and I'll tell you what, it's a big conference, uh, geographically speaking. They go all over the place as far as Arkansas State. The young Thompson, the guy last week that stripped that ball, creating that fumble return for a touchdown, y young Thomas was the guy who initiated that turnover, and Arizona again tonight is on top of the turnover battle. Well, that sack was good for a four-yard loss. It'll bring up second down and 14 for Idaho. Clock begins to run again. Six minutes, 30 seconds remain in the game. And uh, what now? Somebody must have jumped flags everywhere. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. That is, in fact, the early jumping penalty. You really can't be too harsh on college players, though, when you compare them with players in the National Football League that have the opportunity and luxury of playing four preseason games before the season. These guys are on very tight schedules in terms of coming into the summer football and being ready to play that first game. In the pocket is Welsh, and that ball's knocked down. Incomplete pass. And that'll bring up a third down and long. It appears the edge is gone off of this Idaho offense. The same effort, determination that we saw earlier in the quarter seems to have expired. Five minutes, 40 seconds remain in the game. The gutsy John Welsh been knocked around a little bit. down and long. Long drop. Good pass. And finally the tight rope falls down. Chris Lacey out of bounds. They did not get enough for the first down. They got it out respectively though, around the 40-yard line. John Welsh took a pounding back in the pocket. He knew he was going to get hit. Several Arizona Wildcat defenders had their way with him, but he was still was able to deliver the football and put it right on the money that time to a crossing Chris Lacey. Keone Frazier, who delivered the big hit that time, Doug. Something similar has happened many times tonight. Fourth down. And they're going to go for it. Last gasp for this offense. Can they get it? Nope. Not without a flag, they won't. And they don't get it. Belzer was the intended receiver, and the Wildcats were all over it. It was uh, Hinton, I believe, that uh, made the good play for the Wildcats. David, the uh, redshirt sophomore out of uh, San Diego, California. And well, he's another player that's going to be a big part of this defense this year. He had six starts last season, was bothered by a shoulder injury a couple years ago, but he appears to be well recovered from that injury. Well, the Wildcats will have the ball with a short field for John Rattay. And three and out last time. Quick down. It's one of those uh, situations now in this game with five minutes to go. Arizona headed toward its uh, second victory of the season, bringing in some young players, uh, getting some uh, guys some snaps, and, and the temptation uh, 
to criticize from the other side or you're running up the score, but uh, what do you do? you got to get kids some uh, playing times, a couple of lines, a couple of backs. Absolutely. When you get backups in the game, those guys are having opportunities that they've never had before in their life. Peter Hansen at tight end right now. He delivers a block. There's a mill. Stays on his feet to the 30-yard line, close to the first down, but about a buck shy. And the clock runs, coming up on five minutes remaining in the game. Mills definitely has his game face on, not only with that run, with the one he showed before that. He is interested in getting into the end zone. Arizona again with a bias move, and then the uh, new rivalry in the Southwest. The running Rebels, uh, not a basketball team. Only through the football, they didn't uh, fare well last night. Leo Mills again. Upcoming for the Wildcats in two weeks, Nevada, Las Vegas, then the Cougars in town to close out September, then a very busy month of October. Oregon, Oregon State away, Washington away. Trojans here on the 27th, and then uh, November will be here before you know it. Time to lose weight and all that uh, Halloween candy. Washington State, another overtime, Dave? <laughs> that seems to be a regular annual that, meeting with those guys. That's exactly right. They've done that twice in a row. Four minutes remain, and the game straight ahead, and it's a little bit shy. And it appears on fourth down, the Vandals will pill. So these uh, two teams have gone about uh, nine yards in the last uh, eight plays. And Arizona's defense back onto the field. Big house here for the first uh, time this season, and many of them uh, have uh, decided that uh, this contest has been decided. But they'll light it up again, as we mentioned, in two weeks. Ready to battle Las Vegas, and I'm sure the university will be happy to sell you some tickets. Lots of time for Welsh. However, nobody at the other end of the phone. And a late flag. Jeff Franks was the intended receiver. That was thrown by the field judge, and it was thrown very late, so we'll see what it, al it almost looked like someone threw that out of the seats. <laughs> that thing was so far Pass away. Interference. Defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. These officials do not like defensive backs for either team. Presumably not. Let's take a look. I'm not sure. You get the balls even with you. You get to hit people. They cited Kirk Johnson that time, face guarding the, uh, the receiver. This kid can play several different positions. That's what makes him so valuable. All right, the Vandals with the first down, still inside their half of the field. One back is O'Connell. He stays in the block. Rush going right across the middle and wide open is Josh Jelmberg. And I'll tell you what, uh, Doug, if I'm uh, John Robinson looking at the uh, tape from this game tonight, I'm wondering about the middle of the field. Arizona's left that open several times tonight. Well, Jelmberg has proven the ability to go ahead and find seam. He's a very smart, intelligent kid. You'll see him he settled down there about 15, 16 yards downfield waiting for that pass. First down. Straight through the middle, and that's good for six. Touchdown to Ethan Jones. And the Vandals now make it 36-20. In their moment, they have a chance to make it 21. Well, this is a big-time catch by Jones. The Welsh stays back in the pocket. But notice how Jones goes up and reaches for the ball. It actually comes in over top of one of the Arizona defenders, David Hinton. And he has enough concentration on the football to make that catch. That was a pretty nice throw. So with three minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game, what was a sleepy little affair a moment ago becomes something uh, a little bit tighter. 16-point advantage, and now with a two-point conversion, they can make it 14. By the way, the uh, Vandals have three timeouts remaining, and now... Timeout! They Arizona! Still three. The Wildcats call a timeout. They don't want to have anything to do with a two-point conversion without consultation first. Well, you talk about trends. 
Arizona for the second and third quarter. Very dominant in this game, but in the first, not so much. And here in the waning moments of the fourth. It seemed like Idaho started concentrating on the perimeters in running the football. It also started running a passing attack that was a little bit different than what they ran early in the game, which was the quick slants. Instead, you saw John Welsh back in the pocket, fake, he was pumping actually, fake pumping to some of his receivers on short hitch type routes and started hitting them down the seam. So as you mentioned, Dave, this may be something for UNLV to look at in terms of a possible weakness against this defense. But early in the early in this game, through the first three quarters, this defense played extremely well, hustled to the football, but it seems like they've had a little bit of breakdowns here in the fourth quarter, allowing Idaho to not only time back in the pocket, but to find those open receivers. The scoring drive, two plays, 70 yards, a couple of passes. Don't forget the uh, pass interference play that set it all up. Welsh with the 25-yard pass to Jones. And that is how we arrive at this two-point conversion attempt by Idaho. Trailing by 16, trying to make it 14. And just sneaking in, that's that big pullback again, Kevin O'Connell. Caught about three or four passes tonight. Not many of them for many yards. However, that one for enough for two points. And sure enough, 36-22 is our score. We still got 3.21 to go, so I suggest you pay attention. Yes, the Idaho Vandals have hung around, stayed around, and they're making it interesting with three minutes and 21 seconds to go. 36-22 now the score. And, uh, although we don't wager on such things ever, you may want to consider the possibilities of an onside kick here. Gary Love is deep for Arizona, but I'm not sure he's going to see anything to do with this. Line drive, booted in there. Nice catch. I know special teams coaches are always trying to find new ways to do that. Michael Jolivet. Would be one of those sure-handed guys. I We've would seen say that many so. times. Yeah, yeah. they call that. this the hands team. A whole bunch of different things, but one guy that you would want to have his hands on the football would be Michael Jolivet. He made a spectacular catch tonight uh, in the first half to set up uh, a 99-yard touchdown play when he picked off a pass from Brian to Lindegren, who was uh, quarterbacking at the time. So Michael's going to give him a chance to stay cool. And Jason Johnson returns to the ball game and uh, wants some cheers around the ballpark. People are remaining in the stands. And Clarence Farmer is on the field as well for first down. It picks up about four yards. It brings up second down and four. The Wildcats, uh, well, who called the timeout this time? Timeout, Idaho, number one. Well, the Vandals now have used their uh, first timeout. They've got two remaining. Trying to force a turnover. I'll tell you what now, again, uh, this man will not uh, ever want to say we've won some sort of uh, moral victory, but right now his team did not quit. They're playing a Pacific 10 Conference school the second time in as many weeks, and uh, they're giving him a run at the end here. And I'll tell you what, they can be very tough in that uh, Sun Belt Conference this year. When we talked about this Idaho offense, this was not a weak offense. This is a, a, a team that's been very productive over the last couple of years. Uh, just in talking with John Welsh, you're talking about him. He's had over seven 300-yard passing games. He's got a very capable receiving core. It's been his line of scrimmage, especially from the offensive line standpoint, that were the breakdowns last week and even this week. But you will see that their running game resurfaced with uh, Blair Lewis being very productive tonight in terms of getting around the corner against this very tough Arizona defense. So I don't think anybody on that Idaho side has given up yet. No, they haven't, but uh, what they have given up tonight is way too many yards. <laughs> and that's, you see, 495 to be exact, and uh, Arizona trying to make it to 500 now. They gave up a lot last week to the Cougars. Three minutes and eight seconds remain. Quick snap, and this one goes uh, virtually nowhere. That was Farmer again, but the Vandals got underneath his legs. They call a second timeout. That's Jordan Lamps, the sophomore middle linebacker. Timeout, Idaho, a 30-second timeout. 
Idaho has to be thinking that Arizona is going to run the football. You'll notice how they basically penetrated across the line of scrimmage, putting themselves in a position to go ahead and make tackles. Jordan Lampos, as you talked about, Dave quickly got across the line of scrimmage. This kid's very active last week against Washington State. He had seven tackles alone. This will be an interesting play. Three minutes to go, third and eight. And the first stringer back in there, Jason Johnson. He's had a number 50 stellar night. Straight back, pass, little pass inside, and was it a completion? No. Gary Love cradled it, but couldn't control it long enough. As he hit the ground, out came the ball, out comes the punt team, and uh, the Vandals have held with 2.55 to go in the game. I'd be surprised not to see Arizona's first team defense come out with the culmination of this punt. Well, given what's taken place here in the last uh, five minutes, it would make sense. Winston waiting for the punt. A high affair, and Winston's going to come up and drop it, and it's going to go right back to the Wildcats. And that is that. That was a dangerous and foolish play by a returner to have to run full speed, thinking he was going to be able to come down with that football. You'll see Orlando Winston basically at a full stride and allowing the ball to go right between his hands for an Arizona recovery. Well, he sensed some pressure in the neighborhood, and that pressure came from David Chapman, make that Jermaine Chapman. David Hinton, Jermaine Chapman, and uh, tell you what, that's an old offensive line coach, Chapman Grump, played in the NFL, and taking care of the kid who's given him all he could tonight, just made a mistake at the end of the game. So Rate, will take back into the ball game for the Wildcats, in on first down, and here's the next will be a get right back, maybe. It was uh, Tremaine Cox, and yes, he did. There's nothing like 18 to 24-year-old males to make the Saturday night entertaining. It looked like he never had control of the football on the handoff. When Rattay was back handling it off to Tremaine Cox. And that's a situation you want to remind your offense in these circumstances. The yards gained are unimportant. Just hold on to the football and do not go out of bounds. Michael Jones out of Lewiston with his contribution, and here comes the offense back again. Welsh, straight back under pressure, now going to have to run and uh, switch forward for two yards, but that's not what they need right now with that clock running at 2.30. Alex Luna finally brought him down. Luna having a career night <laughs> against this Idaho squad. Idaho has one more timeout, but they're going to wait uh, to use that on defense if uh, they get that far. Quick drop, throw it out, and complete. And still on his feet is Lacey. Lacey's going to make it to the sideline, stop the clock with the first down. Jarvie Worcester finally got him out. Chris Lacey made a great effort in terms of holding on to the football and then somehow was able to avoid the tackle and, and still pick up yardage after the catch. This is the same play that we've seen all night out of this Idaho squad, this quick slant pattern off to their left-hand side. But he just continued to shake free and broke the tackle of Jermaine Chapman as he headed down the sideline. On first down, Welsh overwhelmed. And that time it was Joe Ciofili. Well, Ciofili, this is not the first good play that he's made on defense. He's done a great job tonight on coverage on the tight ends and running backs down the field. But he was in Welsh's face so fast, he had no idea to even try to get rid of the football. There's Joe out of St. Louis High School in Honolulu. 
A lot of Wildcats from the uh, 50th state. It's fun watching some guys that you can tell just love to play football. You can just feel the emotion and energy when they're out there doing their thing, so to speak. And he's one of them. Under two minutes to go for uh, Joe and his uh, defensive teammates, both uh, squads near their sidelines and uh, huddle with their coaches in consultation. This is the final timeout for Idaho. And Obviously, Coach Cable thinks he might be able to get up on the scoreboard one more time, run off another uh, two-point conversion. All of a sudden, you make it a six-point game. Not sure, is that that's the same print or not? But they're hanging in there. The double those are yeah, look like two bookends. Yeah. Make your plans to be here in uh, two weeks when Arizona plays Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, could not manage a punt against uh, Arkansas down in. Uh, Fayetteville and uh, had all kinds of trouble last night on a Friday night playing at home. Well, they've been victimized now two weeks in a row because of turnovers and big plays. Exactly. Second down and 18 after the big loss and the throw. And they may get another first down, and they do. It's a completed pass to Rossi Martin. Not only does he pick up the first down, but he gets out of bounds to stop the clock, and now there's really not a big hurry. They're going to get the 26, uh, 25 seconds after the, uh, the ball is spotted. So plenty of time to huddle and get uh, a play or two sent into the game. Well, this Idaho passing attack is very potent, as they have done over the last several years. We talked about it in the open. Welsh's ability to go ahead and throw for over 5,000 yards in the last three years as quarterback of this offense. First and ten at the 34-yard line. Caps show blitz. They do. Well, then after running, he's got plenty of room. He's got a first down looking for the sideline, and he is whacked. And Lance Briggs, angry because Lance was blitzing, didn't get him, got up and ran him down, but not until he got to the 20-yard line. Now, the ball will uh, be spotted, and the clock will start again. A minute and 41 to go. And you'll see the umpire wind it up. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Lacey. Again, they were trying to hit that seam across the middle. But uh, at this point, that uh, first uh, incomplete pass stops the clock and gives them some time to get organized. A minute and 33 to go. 36-22. John Welsh is the glue that holds this offense together. He's the guy that's in there inspiring teammates and encouraging them on. And he's made some big throws here in the fourth quarter. This, this guy refuses to stop. 343 yards because of his right arm tonight. And again, and he's hit. And that ball is uh, under-delivered. Jarvie Worcester with the uh, coverage, but there were uh, several Wildcats, including Johnny Jackson, who was putting pressure on him. The, the only reason why they are not successful on many of these passing attempts is because protection. They are not giving him enough protection. That time you could see several Arizona defenders that were in his face and obstructing his, the, the free flow of his arm in terms of following through, which has really prevented that from being a reception. 128 to go. Third and 10. Pump fake. Throw it again. Toss it up to the end zone, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver was Martin. And it's down to the fourth down. John Welsh closing in on his best passing day ever. It was 385. He currently has 345. That ball could not have been caught the way it came down out of bounds. But he's really done most of this in the second half. We were showing the graphic at half halftime, the big discrepancy in passing yards. Welsh has made up that difference in the second half. Perhaps a final opportunity. Well, flags down, lots of flags, more flags, flags, flags. That'll stop the clock. Likely holding on several occasions against Idaho, and likely Arizona will simply decline. Now 
half. It's against Arizona. Personal foul, 15-yard face mask, defense, penalty, half the distance from the end of the run. First down. Just when you thought it was over. It's back. My goodness. John Welsh, look at how intuitive he is. And you can see one of the Arizona defenders that time reach out and just grab him. Keone Frazier grabbed his face mask as he was trying to escape off the left-hand side. All that means is that Idaho is in this game. A minute, 12 seconds, the clock ticks. They've got a first and goal. You can't blame Frazier. He's always around the ball. Last year, he recovered five fumbles, which was a Pac-10 record. Sprint out pass. Time to wait for it. And look at that. Tip it around, knock it up. Martin in with the touchdown. And would you believe it's 36 28? That was the closest rendition that I can think of to Joe Montana hoping out of desperation to throw a ball up in the end zone. And I don't even think he was throwing it to any one particular person. He was just throwing it into a pile of bodies, hoping that one of his talented receivers came down with it. And Martin was the lucky recipient. That's an intersection at 5 o'clock. One point. And now Idaho, with 52 seconds remaining in the game, are within seven points. And I'll tell you what, that uh, group in the uh, yellow shirts up there are going to be very pleased regardless of whatever happens in the next 52 seconds. They were down, they were down big, and you got a happy coach there right now. Kids, one, kids hung in there and, and fought. One thing interesting about football, any team sport, there's a thing called momentum, and it may be intangible, and you can't feel it, you can't touch it, but you know when you've got it and when you don't have it. And as this second half was progressing, you could feel, not total shift, but you could feel Idaho starting to gain some confidence, especially in their ability to score points. And they started running plays that would put them in positions if they were successful to get touchdowns. Well, it's said over and over and over again, but uh, the good teams, when you have a chance to put them away, you just put them away. By the way, the most uh, passing yards he's ever had in a game is 385, and that was against Montana State. A little, uh, little drifting at side attempt, and it rolls into touch. That's a procedure call, and that will do it with 52 seconds to go. They have no timeouts. Righto. So what they're looking for now is a Joe Pisarchik handoff. That's all that's <laughs> left for them. The ball was by the receiver. Arizona's ball, 21-yard line. First down. So apparently one of the Wildcats did touch it, and then it went out of bounds. So it's at the 21-yard line. First and 10 for Arizona. Let's see if we can pick that up. Looked like number nine, Gary Love, yep. came over and just made certain that the ball was out of bounds. That's why it was not a procedure call, and that's why Arizona has it at the 21-yard line where it left the playing field. 52 seconds to go, and we'll see if uh, the Caps simply take a knee, and that's uh, it, and we will have to do that one more time. Mate is the uh, quarterback of record as this one comes to its close. Arizona, barring a uh, Pasarczyk. <laughs> Who is the running back on that? I'm trying to remember right now. Anyway. Barring that type of uh, disaster, Arizona will claim its second victory of the season as many starts, 2-0 for the Wildcats. The flip side for the Vandals, they'll go 0-2. John McAvoy has to be happy, though, with the big play potential that his offense exhibited early in this game, as well as the aggressive style of defense that his defenders showed in the first half. Yep. And that man, they're going to have uh, not a bad uh, plane ride home. About three hours on the way back up to Lewiston, Idaho. And we're going to talk about the uh, time they reemerged at Arizona Stadium and played tough. 28 of 46 for 349 yards. Just uh, a little bit shy of his personal record, but a great performance tonight by senior quarterback John Welsh. 
and for that matter, his entire Idaho team. And uh, I'm sure appreciated uh, comments right there from John Makovic to uh, Coach Cable as your guys hung in there. Good luck the rest of the year. Watching head coach John Makovic walk off the field, he doesn't appear to be that happy with this victory, but it's still something that he can build on as the first game of the year. Don't forget Idaho had already had a game under their belt, and that makes a big difference this early in the season. All right, that'll uh, just about do it. Arizona with the win tonight. They win it 36-29, just hanging on. They go to 2-0 and on the season. So for our entire Fox Sports Net crew, I'm Dave Sitton, saying so long from Arizona Stadium. As Arizona wins it 36-29, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. So long, everybody.